This is a code compliance hearing for the city of North Miami. Today's date is July 29th, 2021. And I am Beatrice Kezzo, special magistrate for the city of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of the city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss the case and you may leave. These proceedings are being recorded. Mr. I, apologize. I apologize for the interruption. Um, I just got a message from um, Jennifer. She's asking for five minutes because her computer is giving, she's having technical difficulties right now. Okay. Well, I, I can still read the introduction and um, and you let me know when she when she joins us. Okay. Okay. Um, where was I? I'll start again. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so um, one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have a translator who will assist you during the proceedings. Um, when your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, and any witness that you may have should come forward. Well, actually, should probably raise your hand <laughs> um, and say aloud and inform us of your name your business or mailing address and your relationship to the property. Um, if you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney affidavit in order for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation? Please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first, and then the property owner and or violator will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of fact on the case if I find that a violation of city codes exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new, non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. For appeals of civil citation, I will enter a ruling either affirming or reserving the citation. If the citation is affirmed, I will enter an order assessing a civil penalty, court costs, and a compliance date. If the violator does not comply by the compliance date, Continuing fines and penalties will be assessed. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement action at this time, I will table this case proceeding to another hearing date in the future. If you do not agree with my finding of fact and or ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of the administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost of obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant. I'm getting a feedback. <clears throat> Pursuant to city codes, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, 
the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. Um, Ms. Madam Clerk, you can take over. Good morning and thank you for participating in today's special magistrate hearing. I will review the process by which today's hearing will be conducted. Make sure your device is muted at all times unless you're giving testimony on a case. If you're using two devices to participate in today's hearing, be sure your audio is only enabled on one device. If, you're, if you are registered in advance of today's hearing, your case will be given priority. When your case is called, your system, you'll receive a notification that it has been given access to audio and video so that you may give your testimony. If you did not register in advance and you would like to speak on behalf of a case, when your case is called, I will ask whether there is anyone present on behalf of the property. If you want to speak, please click the raised hand button to be given the ability to speak on the case. Once the magistrate allows you to give testimony on your case, please state your name, property address, and relationship to the property. Okay. Magistrate, we'll move forward with doing the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know why I'm so muted. Okay. I pledge of allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic of which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please announce for the record if there are any additions, deletions to the hearing agenda. Madam Magistrate, um, can we go ahead and swear in the officers and the translators? I don't typically do it, but you can oh. go ahead and. <laughs> no, no, no. I was asking, can we do that with the officer? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. If you are giving testimony today on a case, please rise and raise your right hand as I do the oath. Can we get all code officers giving testimony to have cameras on? We're missing a couple people. So you got yours. Colson, can you fix your camera, please? Jonathan Lemestre, I don't see you. Jonathan's case was um, tabled, so he he's not here. Okay. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give in these proceedings shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? If so, please say I do. I do. I do. Uh, Edmay St. Louis, I didn't see you. Your, your camera's not enabled. Okay. Um, Thank you. And then the translators. Translators, can you um, enable so you can be sworn in, please? Translators, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the translations which you are about to give in these proceedings will be accurate and correct to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability? Please say I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, if you can please announce for the record if there are any amendments, additions, deletions to the agenda. Um, we have cases in compliance. 
which is Arch Creek Development, LLC, CEJNK 2021-00009. The property address is 12615 Arch Creek Road. And we also have item seven on the agenda, James DeLang, case number CEBPR 2021-00033, property address 12210 Northeast 10th Avenue. That case has been postponed for one month. And those are all the amendments to the agenda. Right. Special magistrate, um, um, the deputy city attorney is having some technology, some technological issues. So if it's okay, we're going to go ahead and skip over the first couple items on the agenda and move into uh, the move into the regular agenda until her system's ready to go. All right, let's do that. So, Pilar, can we um, call anyone that's physically here on property? One moment. So we have items 15 and 16, Eves and Olga Gachet, case number CEGMH 2021-00017. This is for property address 670 Northeast 143 Street. Christopher Colson is the officer. They also have a second case, CEWWC 2021-00011 for the same property. Okay, so the resident is physically here. Um, all right, I, Pilar, I don't see the, the camera out front. I don't see if the camera is not... Um, The camera is not enabled on that system. Okay. It should be enabled now. Okay. The problem is it's still muted. Okay. Just one second, because I'm trying to figure out it's named under someone else's name. So, okay. All right, Pilar, can you just hear me? Okay, can you, just, can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can. Okay, thank you, good morning. Good morning, sir. Um, did somebody swear him in? No. I'm gonna Pilar, swear him in now. Sir, can you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please say, I do. I do. Thank you. Sir, what is your name? Uh, Eve Gashet. Okay, what is your relationship to the property? Uh, I am the owner of the property at 670 Northeast, 143rd Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Thank you, sir. My name is Mark Portfolio Munoz. Yeah. Who's my officer? Who's the officer on the case? Uh, officer Carlson, we can't hear you. I'm not sure why. Christopher? I, we, He's trying to adjust no, the volume. There's no audio at all. Can you turn up the volume maybe? Thank there we go. Okay.
I'm sorry, Magistrate. We actually had a huge uh, last minute shift in all of our technology process here. And um, and Officer Colson is brand new. This is his very first case. So we apologize for the for the little bit of delay today and challenges. Go ahead, Chris. Just one to okay. Good morning. I'm Officer Colson, Code Compliance Officer, City of North Miami. And this is a new case. Um, for 670 Northeast 143rd Street, we did, I went out there, observed several violations of the property at that time. And he's been trying to do a few things, but he still is behind on a couple of repairs that he's trying to do for different reasons. But he has been communicating with me on different occasions trying to keep me updated on everything he has been doing but i gave him an extension i think one time yes i did i gave him an extension before but mic went out hello can you still hear me yeah we can hear you we can hear him okay buddy yes but mr I mr ice has been in contact with me trying to do it just ran out of some time he, he mentioned to me that he needed to do some repairs as the tenants needed to move out, but he couldn't do some of the repairs because the tenants were still in there and they needed to move out. And they weren't moving out to, I think, the week. No, I think, no, sir. 714, around 74, the weekend of 714, 21. So what are the, what, what are the, um, what's the violation? What was my violation uh, for this one? Weather type. It was a weather violation because we was getting water coming in from the roof. He sensed, I know, patched that, and it said ceiling ceilings were falling. Ceilings need to be repaired with mold damage. And he has tenants in in um, the units right now. The tenant has since moved out as of. 714, the weekend of 714. So let's say it's 716. The tenant was moving out that weekend. And Mr. Ives called me on 719 and told me the tenants had moved out. So he can begin doing the work on the inside of the unit. Okay. Um, Chris, can you explain to the magistrate what's being depicted in the pictures? This, this picture right here, this first, this picture is as soon as you enter onto the porch, it's peeling the paint. The roof needs to be repaired. The roof, the, the wood needs to be repaired. It's from rain and water damage from outside. That's the front porch. That's a bedroom. Uh, that particular room is uh, according to the tenant before she moved out because I talked with her. She said it's not leaking anymore, that he was able to stop the leak coming from outside. But the ceiling on the inside of the bedroom is still down. All right. And this person, what's on the ground? What's that, in the was, grass? that was a, a drain cap like that goes on the top of a sewer, but he's replaced that and fixed that. Okay. Um. And he has two cases. Yes, one's for the scoffers for the roof, for the for the scoffers for the outside of the other property for the roof that need to be repaired. And. And this is a single family, or is this a duplex or a triplex? What type of property is this? This would be a single family home. Okay. As you can see, the scarf is all the screens are pulled away. And it's some on some of the pictures, you can see some of the molding where it needs to be front of it, probably needs to be pressure washed off. Okay. Um, sir? Yes. What's going on with the house? Oh, uh, well, thanks for uh, allowing me to uh, to come here and to explain the situation. 
And uh, the tenant did send me a, a memo that she would leave on the 14th of last month. And I did call the uh, officer, uh, Carlson, and express to him the tenant is about to move out. And uh, the tenant still not give me the keys as we speak. So when the problem has occurred back in a few months ago, I'm the one who called the code enforcement, called the police to report the issue. Because once I saw the issue on the property, I told the tenant it's not safe. They need to move out. And they didn't want to move out. And I called just for records. So if in case something happened. So the code the compliance came, they said, okay, after that, they wrote me a letter. They said, I have to do these things. So I brought several people in there to help me do the work. And the tenant doesn't allow me or there was no enough space to do the job because the bedroom was in there and everything was out there. So the, the first violation was out, outside, which is uh, the, I fix it because it was an easy access. Now, the tenant is moving out as we speak but the tenant still not giving me back the keys. Uh, yesterday, I had to call police officers to get in the property because I need, they, they cut off the water, they cut off the light. And yesterday, I turned on, I, call, I came here to turn on the water. The city went there yesterday to turn on the water and they had to left me this on the door, stated, we cannot leave your water on because the water is running. Call again for someone must be there. So they couldn't turn on the water because the tenant left with the keys and locked all the doors so I couldn't get in the property. So they said they're going to come back today to give me the keys. Hopefully they do. So all I'm asking right now is to give me an extra, give me uh, 60 days. I will comply with the compliance. Okay. Um, Mr. Colson? Yes. What is the um, city asking? Did, was the landlord the one who contacted the um, for compliance? Yes. He, didn't, he contacted the city and not my, the police department. We, and we were called over by the police department on that day. And he wanted to, for the, how it started, he wanted us to can we help him get an eviction. And we told him that's not what we do. So upon us call, upon him calling us, we begin an investigation and go and see violations on the property we were let in. So that's how the case started of things that needed to be repaired. Okay. Now that the tenant has moved out, are you okay with giving him some time? Yes, Your Honor. 30 days, it would be fine. Okay. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, um, sir. At this point, or you're not asking for an adjudication now, you're asking that we give him some time to um, 30 days. And then when this case returns, if he hasn't made progress on it, then we will adjudicate. Special Magistrate, the city is requesting adjudication and then whatever time you deem fit to do the repairs. All right. Um, I apologize, sir. I didn't write your name down. What is your name? Uh What's it? Um, I'm Eve Gashet. Okay. What's, what's adjudication mean in this case? Meaning that I find that the violation in your house exists um, and that you're, um, it's like a guilty um, verdict. It's basically saying that the, the violation exists. I find in favor of the city and I will give you time to repair, but I'm also going to give you an abatement date and a daily fine amount, meaning that if the work is not done by a certain date or when we're, when you come back to court, if you're not able to prove that you have done um, substantial work towards getting the violation um, fixed, then you will start accumulating a fine. Uh, magistrate, I think that's uh, very unfair to me or to the homeowner. Well, I've been in contact with the officer every move. And as of now, I have no access to the property. The tenant took the keys. 
They don't give me the keys. I have no access. And I've been contacting him constantly to start finding me on the first appearance. I think it's injustice. Okay. When did you learn about, I mean, all of this, the leak, the mold, the, the falling roof, the ceiling? You, you must have known how long have the tenants been on the property? The tenant has three years on the property. That was the first time she called me. She texts me around the three in the morning. She said, Mr. Gashet, there's a leak on the property. I said, send me a picture. She sent me the picture. I think that was on back in May or something like that. And I went there like on next day. She showed me the pictures. A couple of days later, I went back on the same week with, the, with someone to repair the job. But they told me they couldn't fix it because it's inside the bedroom. The tenant has to move out. And I told him, give me the room, clear it for me so I can do the job. The tenant is the one who does not allow me to do the job. If you do not give me 30 days extension to finish the job, I think it's not right. Because in the facts, I'm the one magistrate who called the city. When I called the, 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 the police officer, they told me they're going to call the call of compliance. I said, yes, call the call of compliance. They can see the damage on the roof. The other work outside where he mentioned about the paint peeling, these are minor stuff. I will fix everything as soon as I fix the ceiling. But the, all I'm asking is that is this extension. I will take care of that. Okay. I'm going to give you 30 days. Um, I don't think that any of the work will be done by within 30 days because it's expensive. But since this is your first time up and the fact that the tenant has just moved out, I'll give you the 30 days that you're requesting. And then when the case comes back, we'll see where you are, at which point I'll decide on a, an adjudication. Thank Good you. luck to you, Mr. Gashet. Thank you. Have a blessing day. Magistrate, may I just ask that the uh, property owner contact the city for an in inside inspection upon completion that he would allow access into the unit for inspection? Absolutely. Make sure that you contact Officer Colson um, so that he can come in and do an inspection. Okay. You mean when the job is completed, right? Did you guys want to access now, Mr. Colson, or after the job has been completed? After the job has been completed. I've, if nothing has changed since the last, ins my final inspection. So after the job okay. has been completed. Oh, sure. All no right. problem. No problem. I'm in contact with Mr. Colson. I'll be more than happy to do so. And then uh, we can close the case. Thank you, you guys, for your time. Well, Thank you, sir. No, Mr. Gashet, also just bear in mind that you will have to make sure you acquire the proper permits to do the work at the property. So please visit the building department before you start doing any work on the ceiling, on the roof, to ensure that you have proper permits and to ensure that you don't accrue any additional violation. Oh, if it's a, if I'm doing it myself, do I have to get permit to do that as a homeowner doing it? Yes. Oh. Yes, sir. No yes. Problem. Okay. No problem. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we know if Jennifer is ready yet? She's not ready yet. I don't see her. Oh, I see Deputy City Attorney. Oh, is that you, Veronique? No, that's um, Jennifer. But let me just pop into her office to see, to get status. <laughs> okay. All right. Call the next case. Give me one moment. There's no one signed in to um, Q list. Give me one moment. So, Pilar, go ahead and if there's no one signed in, then let's go ahead and call the cases in the queue. The next item on the agenda. Is going to be um, Marcos Munoz, case number CEPFY 2021 property address 14115 Northwest 6th Avenue. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Magistrate, that's number nine on the agenda. I don't think the clerk said that. Sorry, I apologize. Hey, 
Good morning, sir. Please state your full name for the record and your relationship to the property. Excuse me? Please state your full name for the record and your relationship to the property. My telephone number. Telephone number. Oh, hold on, sir. Do you need um, interpreter? Spanish interpreter? Yes. Okay. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Please good ask morning. him to state his full name in relationship to the property. Señor, por favor, pudiera decirme su nombre completo y cuál es su relación con la propiedad? Sí, mi nombre completo es Marco Tulio Muñoz y la relación de la, con la, la, la propiedad es que soy el dueño de la, de la propiedad. So, my full name is Marco Tulio Muñoz and my relationship with the property is that I'm the owner. Awesome. Please, Werman. Can you please raise your right hand? Por favor, pudiera levantar su mano derecha. Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give in today's proceeding shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Please say I do. Entonces, usted jura solemnemente que el testimonio que estará por decir es la verdad y nada más que la verdad ante Dios. Sí, claro, sí. Yes, sir. Okay. Officer Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Office, sir. This is a new case for a vehicle parked on the front lawn. It was originally opened. This violation was originally opened on May 30th, 2021, whereas I was driving by the property and I noticed um, two vehicles parked on the front lawn. I sent the letter to the property owner in May and again in June. On the last reinspection date, the vehicle still remained at the property. I've met the property owner at the property and has had a conversation. He's not understanding why he needs to move the vehicle from the front lawn. I very detailed explained. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot their interpreting. Um, so I'll start over. Um, this is a new violation for a property address 14115 Northwest 6th Avenue. Bien, entonces este, este es un nuevo caso. Esto es para, esto es para la, la es una nueva violación en la que ocurrió en la 14155 Northwest en la avenida 6. This violation was originally cited on April 30th, 2021. Entonces, esta violación se, se originó en primer punto en abril 30 de 2021. Upon my first inspection, I've noticed two vehicles at the property. Upon two additional inspections, um, vehicles were still parked on the front lawn. Entonces, eh, lo, que, lo que se notó es que habían dos vehículos estacionados en la, en la, en la parte, en, no, en la cochera, no en la cochera, sino en el patio de enfrente. Ahora, este se, su, se revisó otras dos veces posteriores. Y eh, de igual manera continuaban en el mismo lugar. I've met with the property owner before and after the reinspection date, and he's not understanding why he needs to remove the vehicles from his private property. Entonces, yo ya, eh, yo ya me, eh, yo ya me he juntado con el con el dueño de la propiedad antes y después de la de la re de la reinspección. Y, aún, y él parece hacer no entender el motivo de por qué se tiene que de por qué se tiene que remover esos vehículos de ese lugar. Upon my re last reinspection on July 22nd, the vehicle still remained parked at the property. En mi última inspección, eh, dada en mi última reinspección, dada en la fecha julio 22, los vehículos siguen estacionados en esa parte de la propiedad. So I'll let the property owner explain now why the vehicle still remain parked there. Let, let me ask you before before I, I speak to the owner. Do I see a concrete slab? Yes. Um, um, yes, he does have a concrete slab, um, whereas he has one vehicle parked at the property. But he has two additional vehicles. Um, I'm talking about where the two additional. Is this a, is, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm pointing at it like you can see me. But where the, the silver vehicle is, is parked. No. Is um, no. And in, in, in interpreter, you can, you know, interpret so that he knows what we're stating um, just in case. 
But no, that is um, rocks that he's had there. Um, whereas he stated a few years ago, Code Officer Clark, who is no longer with the city, told him that he could place down some gravel or rocks. Um, and that's what that's there. But um, grass and everything has grown up in it and is now not looking like a driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay, entonces. Eh, okay, entonces se le, se le preguntó se le preguntó al oficial este que si el que si en el suelo donde estaban los otros dos autos había concreto a lo cual a lo cual se pasó a revisar que no no había concreto en los en los otros dos vehículos solamente en uno entonces eh, a lo que a lo que cuando ella habló con usted había, usted había comentado que el oficial que el otro oficial crack el que ya no está con los dos pero que el oficial crack come, le comentó que pudiera haber que pudo haber estado utilizando grava o, o rocas eh, entonces pero para el momento de para el momento de, de bueno en este momento el pasto ha crecido tanto que ya no parece que ya no parece un, en un lugar de pues, para estacionar este, sí yo eché roca tiene puesta roca eh, lo que pasa es que por el, el tiempo y, y que yo tuve mal mal del hombro tenía un problema con el hombro no podía hacer nada entonces no había limpiado bien pero ahora está limpio y la roca se ve, eh, esto hará como seis o siete años que la, la oficial pasó, no sé si es la misma, y mandó a que echara piedras, ¿sí? roca, y yo la eché. Entonces, ahora vuelve otra vez de que los carros no pueden estar adentro si no es en, en un driveway o un pavimento. Ya tiene como siete u ocho años de estar en, en la roca puesta y no había habido problema. ¿Okay? Ahora vuelve otra vez con la misma cosa. Entonces yo le hablé, le hablé en el carro porque cuando ella llegó, fue el 21, no fue el 22, el 21 llegó ella, yo hablé con ella personalmente y le dije lo que pasaba. Y le dije que ella misma había mandado a poner roca y yo la había puesto. Entonces hay otra cosa, porque hay otras vecindades que están en que, que tienen carros adentro, encima de la, de la hierba, y no tienen nada, ni concreto ni nada. All right. So, yes, I, I put in there some rocks. Uh, but with the time, but with the time, well, the, the well, the grass has grown. I had some problems with my shoulder, and and that's the reason that I, that I like they, that I didn't attend it. But then, uh, the, but now the the is has been already cut. The grass has already been cut. Uh, the rock now can be seen. And yes, it's true. Like it, it, this happened about six or seven years ago, where there was uh, an officer that told me that I needed to that I needed to put some gravel or rocks in order to do a, like some kind of a driveway or even or even concrete. Um, the, And so that, um, and so as I said, that happened about six or seven years ago. I didn't have any issues uh, since then uh, until now. And so it was actually on July the twenty first when I met when I met the officer, and and was when the is when the officer told me all about this. But um, but but uh, what I can, um, sorry, but also what I can notice is that there are other neighbors that they have that they do not even have in any any part any single part of concrete and there's only grass and their part and their cars are parked over there okay so um officer sanders if he is in well he probably have to add either a driveway or are they still allowed to put the gravel now or Does it have to be a concrete? They are allowed gravel, but he would have to do it with a permit. I looked in the computer when we first um, spoke and there was no permit ever obtained um, six or seven years ago. So again, we allow it, but with the proper permits. All right. Can you tell him, can you ask him whether or not he can um, apply for the permit so that he can replace the gravel? 
Ok, entonces, señor, usted pudiese estar, usted pudiese estar, este, pues pidiendo el permiso, el, aplicando para un permiso para que se le esté poni para que usted esté poniendo la grava. Sí, está bien, claro. Tiene, tiene puesta, pero yo le puedo poner un poco más. Claro. Uh, so yes, sure. I, uh, there's, there's uh, already grave over there, but it's fine. I can go ahead and put more. In the meantime. Is there a swell area? Is there another area where he can move these two vehicles to? Mientras, te, mientras tanto esto pasa, ¿hay algún, hay algún eh, suelo sólido eh, donde pudiera estar poniendo estos dos vehículos? No. Sería afuera en la, en la calle, en el, en el, en el, en el afuera, ¿eh? fuera de, de mi propiedad. Pero el problema por lo que yo los entré fue porque me robaron un carro enfrente de mi casa. Uh -huh. Y entonces, eh, a Dios gracias lo encontramos, pero entonces decidí que tenía que meterlos a, a, adentro de la casa y con candado. Esa es la razón por la cual están adentro los carros. So, um, so no, no, I don't. Uh... In the in the, like the other the other option that I will have is to is to park them on this on the like on the street outside outside my house, but the principal reason where the the main reason where when 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 I brought the cars inside in the first place is because one of my cars one of my cars was stolen in front of my house, and so that's the reason that that's the reason that that I decided to to put them inside and. They are locked, so because because of because of what happened that one of the cars was stolen. Mr. Munoz, uh, I don't want to rule against you today. What I'm going to ask you to do is find a place on the street and park these two vehicles while you apply for a permit to replace the gravel. Okay, I'm giving you 30 days to do that. Officer Standers is going to drive by, and if these vehicles are still parked there, when this case comes back to me, sir, I'm going to have to find um, rule against you. Okay, I'm not doing that today. I'm giving you an opportunity to remove the vehicles. So that's what I need you to do today. Muy bien, señor. Entonces, eh, voy a estar, voy a estar, este, el día de hoy no quiero, no quiero, este, pues, o sea, eh, decidir en su contra. Entonces, lo que vamos a estar haciendo es que sí va a tener que estar buscando un lugar en, en la, en la, en la calle donde pueda estar estacionando sus vehículos en lo que consigue, en lo que usted aplica por, para que se le esté poniendo, para poner la grava. Entonces, esto se lo estaré dando eh, se lo estaré, le estaré dando un lapso de 30 días para cumplir. Eh, después de ese tiempo, si la oficial, eh, perdón, en ese tiempo, si la oficial Sanders estará, estará yendo para ver si los vehículos no están ahí, en dado caso que sí lo estén, entonces eh, la siguiente vez que nos veamos, que nos veamos en, en, aquí, en, en, eh, que nos veamos aquí, ahí sí estaré decidiendo en su contra, pero esta vez le estaré dando la oportunidad para que los pueda mover, así como para que pueda poner la grava. Perfecto. That's perfect. All right, sir. Have a good day. Bien, señor, que tenga buen día. Muchas gracias. Igualmente. Gracias. Thank you very much. You too. We will be moving into order of business, the revocation of the business tax receipt for Gumo Corp. Um, doing business as Arena Lounge at 1529 Northwest 119th Street. Uh, Jennifer Warren. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, in this case, the City of North Miami is here today to conduct a hearing for revocation of the business tax receipt for the business located at 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street. Um, and this would be in accordance with Section 11-29 of the City Code which provides for revocation of the BTR upon proper notice and a hearing. Um, specifically, the City of North Miami uh, believe, believes that revocation of the BTR is appropriate on three grounds. Um, first, because the taxpayer is conducting a business which is not in compliance with the City, County Code, State, or Federal Law or Regulation, which is in violation of Section 11-29, Subsection A2 of the City Code. 
Secondly, the city also believes that this, this business has obtained its business tax receipt and certificate of use by providing misleading and or deceptive information and making false statements that were relied on by the city employees in issuing the permits and certificates, which is in violation of section 11-29A4. Finally, in accordance with section 11-29F, it is the opinion of the North Miami Police Department that the premises for which this business tax receipt has been issued, as well as the public areas surrounding the premises, has become a meeting place for persons engaged in criminal activity so as to create a detriment to the health, safety, morals, or welfare of the community. Um, the city believes that um, the evidence and testimony it will present will support um, the revocation of the business tax receipt on these three bases. Thank you. Um, the officer. I, I the do council is present. I don't see I'm him. sorry. Jennifer, I apologize. We have no idea who's here for this case. Yeah, I see in the chat officer. Jose Trellis Herrera, who's the attorney. For Correct. Thank you. morning i unfortunately nobody allowed me to in so I, I guess there were things that were said before i was able to object to this proceeding going forward no the only thing that she did was did an introduction i, I understand but i i have a i have an objection to this proceeding going forward okay you, you may state your your position sir i i have i have a question and and it's as a matter of respect your honor the last name your last name and the city attorney's last name seem to be similar. I'm just wondering if there's any familiar relationship before we go forward. Yes, there is. And just for the record, I am related to the city attorney. Um, I can tell you that that has never been an issue for me. Um, Jeff, the city attorney, Jeff Kazo, and I have never discussed any of the cases that are hurt that have come before me or cases that I have heard. And I have been doing this for many years, and this has never been an issue before. Well, I'm, I'm I'm putting it forth respectfully because there are issues in this in this matter um, that I have spoken with the city attorney about, and obviously it, it's concerning to my client if I'm speaking with him openly, and those issues may be shared. So I'm I'm putting that on the record. No, Uh and. The additional objection that I have is I was provided with a witness list and exhibit list last week while I was out of town. The city knew I was going to be out of town. Uh, and there's a number of exhibits that the city has not provided and has not given me an opportunity to review. Moreover, they have listed a number of incidents that they plan on using against my clients. And I, it's A to double M. Uh, I figure that's roughly 20 some odd incidents that they're claiming. I haven't been able to verify what these is incidents are. But what I can tell you is that based on the arrest affidavits that, that they're alleging to try to introduce against my client, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not even verifiable. And essentially what they're, what they're seeking to do and what the city is seeking to do is trash my client's business based on the fact that patrons happen to be criminals or may be criminals or may engage in criminal conduct. I don't think that's fair to my, to my client because if people are criminals, you can't control who comes and goes from your business. So I object to any introduction of these arrest affidavits or any of these incident numbers without verification as to whether those incidents have anything to do with Arena's grill and lounge. Okay. Um, the city attorney. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, so the city did provide opposing counsel with um, all of the police reports that are intended to be introduced into evidence today. Um, the city, you know, at this point hasn't introduced them into evidence. We haven't laid the foundation. We do have um, a North Miami police officer who will attest to, to the events. Um, however, we, we believe that the objection to the introduction of the, the evidence is premature at this point. We haven't even called our witness yet. I agree. 
and and may I respond briefly? Yes. It's outside the four corners of the citation issued by the city. The four corners of the citation issued by the city were that my client did not have the appropriate occupational license or business tax license to operate a nightclub and lounge. It never had to do with congregating, criminal activity, or any of the sort. Thus, it's outside the four corners of the citation. The citations are my notice for today. Otherwise, I'm improperly noticed and you're violating my client's due process rights. Permission to respond, Your Honor? The city, yes. the city did provide notice of today's hearing, which was for revocation of the business tax receipt, um, which is under section 11-29 of the code. And one of the um, criteria for revocation of the business tax receipt is criminal activity. So uh, the city believes that opposing counsel was received with proper notice that the city was going to proceed with um, revocation of the business tax receipt. Uh, you know, there are citations on today's hearings, but those, those are separate and apart from the business tax hearing. All right, your, your objections are noted, sir. Are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to call our, the city's first witness, Rafael Pedron. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your full, I'm sorry. Uh, if you could state your name. Can you swear in, please? Was he sworn in? Swear in, please. Please raise your right hand, Mr. Pedron. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please say I do. I do. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Padron, um, what is your current job title with the City of North Miami? Administrative Coordinator with the Finance Department. And what are your job duties as the Administrative Coordinator for the Finance Department? Oversee, issue, and collect the business taxes for the City of North Miami. And what is your background, experience, and qualifications as the Administrative Coordinator for the Finance Department? I was a part of the BTR team since 2014 and have been the sole BTR official since October of last year and am um, pending certification as a certified business tax official with all coursework already completed. And in your job role, do you oversee the issuance of business tax receipts? Yes. What is a business tax receipt? It's the document that the city issues, which proves that the business in question has come complied with the provisions in the North Miami BTR ordinance, as well as the Florida statute governing business taxes, chapter 205. And what is the purpose of a business tax receipt? It's the fees that the city charges and how the city grants the privilege of engaging in or managing business or professions or occupations within our jurisdiction. Okay. I'm gonna share screen and I'm gonna show you exhibit number one. Can you see my screen, Mr. Pedro? Yes, yes, I see it. Is this a business tax receipt? Yes, it is. And is this business tax receipt, was this issued by the city of North Miami Finance Department? Yes, it was. And what business and address is this business tax receipt for? It's for Miles Unlimited Incorporated, doing business as Arena Lounge, Grill and Lounge, located at 1547 to 1551 Northwest 119th Street in North Miami. And what is the allowed use under this uh, business tax receipt? Restaurant, 200 seats with a four COP beverage license. And what type of business is the business owner allowed to conduct under the parameters of this issued business tax receipt? Restaurant. One second, I'm going to pull up another exhibit. Are you able to see my screen? I, I am, yes. Okay. Did the business complete an application for the issuance of the business tax receipt? Yes. Is this the application that was received by the city of North Miami for the issuance of the business tax receipt? Yes. 
what type of business did the business owner tell the city that they were going to conduct when they filled out their application? A full service restaurant. And did the applicant at any time come in to update their business name? Yes, um, they he changed their DBA, also known as the fictitious name, from Deseo Cafe to um, Deseo Cafe and Sports Bar to Arena Grill Lounge. So the corporate time, name stayed the same. Okay. And then at that time, did the property owner ever update their business tax receipt for purposes of running a nightclub use at the, for the property? No. Is there any language in the business receipt application that notifies the business owner of the requirement to notify the city of any changes in ownership as well as the use? Yes. Where does it say that? It says it on the application right above where the applicant is meant to sign. In and the older application, which you're displaying, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, in a different spot, but yeah, it's on both applications. Okay, so the business owner would have been aware that they were required to, to let us know that there was a nightclub use being conducted there. Yes, any and all changes should have been, we should have been notified of any and all changes. And is it true that under section code section 11-22, no business tax receipt shall be issued or transferred um, until the location of the business occupation or profession is first determined to be in compliance with the city's zoning code, as well as other regulatory ordinances of the city? Yes, that's true. So was the applicant required to disclose the appropriate use for which the business was being conducted so that the city could ensure that the proper zoning laws were complied with? Yes. And would it be considered a false statement if the applicant stated in their application that they were operating a restaurant as opposed to a nightclub? Yes. And if the property owner continues to unlawfully conduct business operations as a nightclub under a restaurant BTR license, is the BTR subject to revocation because they have operated a different type of business than the one that they have applied for and was approved and licensed? Yes. No further questions at this time for this witness. However, Your Honor, the city would reserve extra time for rebuttal if needed. You're on mute. You're muted, Magistrate. Mr. Herrera, do you have any questions for the witness? I have several for the witness. Good morning, Mr. Padron. Good morning. Mr. Padron, did you ever meet personally with the owners of Maz Unlimited when they filled out the application? Not that I could recall. Sometimes they send in a, um, a representative, sometimes it's the owner. So it wouldn't be true that they filled, it wouldn't be true that they filled it out in front of you, correct? No. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Okay. It, it's Sorry. impossible to recall every single business owner. Okay, but in this case, you don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. Do you know if the person that filled this out speaks English or Spanish? I don't know. Do you know if the city informed this person that filled it out, the owner of Maz Unlimited, that there was a distinction between running a restaurant, a nightclub, and a bar? I, I do not know. Is it fair to say that if you don't understand what you're filling out, you could mistake the type of business you're applying uh, for a property license? I don't know. So is it fair to say you have no independent knowledge of anything you just testified to? I everything that I testified to is it is is exactly what happened when they applied. But you just told me. You so if they didn't speak English, I speak Spanish. They could have asked me any questions they liked. But did you ever speak with the owners of Maz Unlimited when they filled this out or presented it to the city? I do not know because so I apply. I handle all businesses that apply and it's impossible for me to remember every business, especially one from 2018. So is it fair to say that you don't have personal knowledge of the facts related to this application? Well, everything's well documented in the system. So everything that I, that I testified to is documented. Okay, but you just told me that you don't know whether the person spoke English or Spanish. 
Well, I, I, I don't recall. I'm not going to know whether someone speaks English or Spanish in the system. That's, that's okay. irrelevant. So again, is it, fair to, is it fair to say that, that if they had any questions about what, was, what would the proper business tax license or certificate of use permit for this business would be for the city, uh, you wouldn't recall if they asked or not? I'm sorry, repeat the question. If they weren't sure what, what the business tax receipt they were supposed to apply for, i.e. lounge, restaurant, or nightclub, you wouldn't have personal knowledge whether they ever inquired about the, about the, the proper designation to the city? No, I don't know. Okay. So this could simply be a misunderstanding. I, I I don't know. It, it it could it could be many. It could be a misunderstanding. They could have known exactly what they were doing. So is it fair to say that your te your testimony was strictly based on a mechanical best world scenario of how the application process is supposed to work at the city of North Miami? My testimony is based on how it normally works here, applying for a business tax receipt. Yes, but not unique to my client. Correct? No, not necessarily. Okay. Do you have any personal knowledge or any independent knowledge whether Maz Unlimited or Arena ever inquired about the proper designation for their business to the city of North Miami? Not within the business. I, I don't recall. Nothing further. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Padron, what languages do you speak? English and Spanish. And in your job role, do you routinely assist customers of different languages? Yes, daily. On the phone or in person? Both. So if a customer had um, trouble understanding any statements on the application, they would have access to you both in person as well as via telephone email? All of the above, yes. Um, if a person indicated that they had an issue or a misunderstanding, do you feel that with your background experience that you would be able to um, assist? Yes, and um, normally I would route them to the zoning department for further clarification on the difference between a restaurant and possibly a bar and, lounge, bar and nightclub. Okay. And do you feel like your command of the Spanish language is such that you would be able to explain any kind of complex concepts involved with the business tax receipt to a customer? Yes. Does app do applicants sign their business tax receipt application? Yes. And as part of their application, is there not a statement that says that they have read and fully understand the city's code and ordinances in regards to the provisions for regulating local business taxes? Yes. Is it part of your job role to investigate the truthfulness of statements made by applicants? Yes. Okay. In this instance, did you rely on the statements in the business tax receipt application for Moss Unlimited when they told you that they were going to be operating a full service restaurant? Yes. And did you review any additional regulatory information when the applicant submitted their application for business tax receipt? Did they have any kind of state licenses that came with it? Yes, they had the state licenses for FDBPR and, and some business uh, registrations. And what did their licensure from the state of Florida indicate the business use would be for? Did it One second. It was seating food service. Was there anything on their state licensure that indicated that they would be operating a nightclub use? No, it was just the food service license and the retailer of alcoholic beverages, which is common for restaurants as well. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Your Honor, I have one follow-up question, given yes. the line of question by the city. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pad Mr. Padron, uh, when you provide the city's application packet, and I'm talking about the, the unfilled out packet. Um, is there a checklist? Is there some kind of uh, colored informational sheet that explains to the applicant what a restaurant is, what a nightclub is, and what a bar and lounge is within the code of the city of North Miami? 
No. So is it fair to say that even if they sign this, uh, representing to the city that it's truthful, uh, the city doesn't give that kind of information to the applicant? That information is widely available on the city's website, Municode. Do you? But it is not. On the, it is not on the checklist. Okay. So that would require additional steps of the applicant, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you guys provide that information to the applicant when they come and apply? No. So how would the applicant go about finding that? They would do the necessary research that any business does when they're opening a business. Are you familiar with the level of education, the level of comfort with technology of the applicant? I am not. So would it be fair to say that if somebody doesn't direct the applicant or instruct the applicant on where to find their, the definition of the business within the code of the city of North Miami, uh, how can they expect the applicant to find it? I wouldn't. I'm going based on the application where they wrote full service restaurant. So that's what I went by. But, but nobody, but is it fair to say that, that I can rest assured that nobody at the city of North Miami gave the applicant any information as to what zoning designations there were for, for restaurant, bar and lounge and like. I can't attest to the rest of the city of North Miami, but I can say that that's not information that I would typically provide unless it is asked of me. Okay. And to the best of your recollection, nobody called you or asked you about it, correct? To the best of my recollection, no. Thank you. Anything for this witness? Um, the city would proceed with its next witch, witness, which is Derek Cook. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So. Mr. Cook, can you state your name for the record? Derek Cook. And what is your current position with the city of North Miami? Zoning manager. And what are your job duties as a zoning manager? Well, I oversee the process of the certificate of use application process, um, approving of certificate of use within the city, oversee the, as a liaison to the board of adjustment, which allows for the administration of special exceptions and variances to the code land development regulations. I also oversee all site plan approvals, all new developments, um, as a plethora of things that I attend to as the zoning manager in that in that job capacity. Ms. Warren, I apologize. I'm getting some feedback from Mr. Cook. You can. I'm getting feedback. Is anyone else hear it? Because I'm not hearing it on my end. I'm hearing something. I'm not really sure what it is. It's quiet now. You may proceed. Okay. Um, and Mr. Cook, what are your background experience and qualifications? Um, I've been working in the planning and zoning field since 2002. Started as um, with the city, of, with the county of Henderson County in North Carolina in my home state as the assistant zoning administrator, as the assistant um, um, subdivision administrator, moved from there to the city of McMinnville as I served as a community planning, a community planner for the city, moved from there to Delray Beach as I served as a planning, a planner for the planning and zoning department. And from there I worked for 11 years with the city of Miami and as planning and zoning department as a planner who oversee the um, processing of all development within that city and um, going before the Board of Planning and Zoning, presenting applications for special exceptions, zonings, land use amendments, um, rezonings, um, things to that effect, until I got to the city of North Miami in 2018 to serve as their zoning manager. And in your job role as a zoning manager for the city of North Miami, do you oversee the issuance of certificates of use? I do. What is a certificate of use? In a nutshell, the certificate of use is the license that allows for a business to operate within the city of North Miami. And what is the purpose of a certificate of use? Yeah. 
the um, the purpose of the certificate of use is to, and I'm going to read it from the code. The purpose of this section is to ensure that prior to residential property being conveyed to a new owner, that's reoccupancy, excuse me. In a nutshell, the certificate of use is to ensure that businesses that are operating are operating in the confines of what is allowed within the land development regulations. To speak to what the um, um, my colleague, Mr. Padron, spoke of and what the um, applicant um, representatives questioned is that we oversee the fact that if you are asking to do something, that the location that you are going to uh, operate the business is zoned to allow for that use. And the certificate of use confirms that. So one of our first steps when somebody supply, applies for a certificate of use is that we actually indicate on that form that that is an allowed use. And that's part of them going to Durham, which is the Department of Environmental Research and Management with the county. And they need to have that stamp showing that yes, that the zoning department has confirmed that that use is allowed at that location. So that, in a nutshell, is what the certificate of use is doing. It is confirmation that the use that they are asking for, such as, as a restaurant, nightclub, or whatever, is allowed use, and they have gone through the proper processes to activate that use, and the certificate of use confirms that upon being issued. Thank you. I'm going to now share my screen, Mr. Cook. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, I am. Is this a certificate of use that is issued by the city of North Miami? It is. Can you confirm what address and business this certificate of use was issued for? It was issued for 1547 through 1551 Northwest 119th Street. And what type of business is the property owner allowed to conduct on, within the parameters of this particular CU? As described, uh, uh, as described, as approved, a restaurant, 200 seats with a four COP beverage license. Thank you. And Mr. Cook, at any time before the issuance of the CU, would the applicant be required to fill out an application? Yes. I'm going to now share my screen again. Can you see my screen? Yes. Is this the application that was completed by the business owner in order to obtain their CU? It was the application that was issued, um, was filled out by the business owner of Mays LLC. And what type of business did they tell the city that they were gonna conduct when they completed this application? A restaurant with a four COP license. And have you ever had any discussions with this business owner in regards to um, the necessary steps that they would have to do to license this business? I did. Can you please explain what those discussions were? So when the applicant came in to change the name of the business from the one that was noted on the, on the document that you showed, just showed as as that's so, restaurant to the the the, um, the arena and bar and grill. I had an extensive conversation with that individual about what a restaurant is and what is a nightclub and what procedures would be necessary to become a legitimate nightclub within the city. And so, can you elaborate? Um, you said that there's differences in um, the city's code between a nightclub and a certificate. I'm going to now share my screen again, and I'm going to show you excerpts. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. Are these um, excerpts uh, definitions coming from the city's land development regulations? It is. And do the land development regulations make any differentiation between a nightclub and a restaurant? It does. Uh, what is the, the differentiation? 
So if I may, as per definition, a restaurant or cafe shall mean a business holding a current city of city business tax receipt with a restaurant license issued by the state and which is advertised and held out to the public to be a place where food is prepared for consumption. The primary operation of a restaurant shall be the serving of food and the sale of alcoholic beverages is entirely incidental to the principal use of selling food. A nightclub, as defined, is a nightclub shall mean a restaurant, dining room, or other establishment which operates after 11 p.m. where food and or a beverage, alcoholic beverages are licensed to be sold and consumed on the premises and where music, dance, floor shows, or other forms of entertainment are provided for guests and patrons with or without an admission fee. And Mr. Cook, under the city's uh, land development re regulations, are restaurants allowed to operate past the hours of 11 p.m.? So you have you have a situation where you have restaurants that operate past 11 p.m., such as a Denny's, IHOP, but those restaurants, the distinction is they are not licensed to sell beverage alcohol at those locations. So, so we have that. And you have certain things such as, you know, you have the McDonald's and you have Wendy's and they have drive throughs that operate past 11 p.m. But their interior is not open to the public after that time. Now, does, that, does your answer differ if they're open past 11 p.m., but also provide entertainment such as music, DJs, dancers, and the like. It does. As you, as you heard in the definition of a nightclub, there's a distinction that is made specifically about, A, that you are licensed to serve food or alcohol, and that where music, dance, floor shows, or other forms of entertainment are provided for guests and patrons with or without an admission. And are businesses required to operate within the confines of what their certificate of use is issued for? Yes, it is. So would it be a violation of the city's zoning code to conduct a business as a nightclub while only being licensed to be a restaurant? Yes, it is. If the applicant was going to conduct a nightclub use at the property address, uh, are they required to disclose that use on their certificate of use application? Yes, they are. So when the applicant in their application stated that they would be a full service restaurant, did they provide misleading, deceptive, or false statements in applying for their CU? So I, I, I don't, um, um, forgive me. I would say that you can say that, but is it considered if you had, um, if there's no mission to the full operation of what you are doing at your location, then you would say that there's an element of deception there, um, whether it was cognitive or not, um, that they didn't give a full disclosure of the operation of their business. And in that vein, then they are not fulfilling what is uh, specific to the certificate of use requirements and that you need to be, it needs to be in line with what the certificate is being issued for. And in this instance, it was for a restaurant and it wasn't be and anything outside of that will be in violation of the land development regulations. And would the city of North Miami issue the certificate of use for a restaurant if the applicant had stated in their application that they were actually really going to conduct a nightclub use? No, we would not. So in this instance, because the applicant stated that they would be conducting a full service restaurant use, the city issued a certificate of use for a restaurant use, correct? That's correct. Um, does the city also issue certificates of use for nightclub uses as well? Yes, we do. And does the process differ? Yes, it does. How so? So to operate as a nightclub within the city of North Miami, you must obtain a special exception, which requires review and approval by the Board of Adjustment, which is a public meeting, that entails noticing of the residents within a 500 foot radius, a meeting that the um, applicant is comes to and any one from the public comes to 
to express any concerns or support for the um, item. Also, as part of um, approval for a nightclub, you have distance separations requirements from residential use, from schools, from, um, um, from religious institutions. And that would need to be identified. And if that individual does not meet those distance separations, then they would need to seek a variance to deviate from the code to allow for them to operate within the parameters of closer than what the code requires for distance separation. So that is what you would need to go through and we obtain those approvals. And then if necessary, if you needed the distance separation um, deviation, get the variance approval, get the special exception, and upon an approval, then we would be able to issue them a certificate of use for nightclub use. And within that process, um, is there any city board that um, reviews the application? The Board of Adjustment. And does that board uh, take into consideration um, certain factors in the business and issue conditions of approval? That is the very nature of the special exception that we have determined that this use requires um, special review by a board. So if they deem it necessary that they can issue conditions to mitigate what could be potential impact of such a use in the surrounding area. And within that scope, would they also be able to review any security plans for the nightclub to make sure uh, the safety, health, the health, safety and welfare of the community? Yes. Did any of that happen here? No. Is it possible for the establishment, this um, Mass Unlimited Inc. operating as Arena Sports Lounge, would they be able to ap apply for the appropriate license for the type of business? Could they go through the process that you described? Yes. They Have they ever done so? No. And when you earlier in your testimony stated that you had talked to the business owner about um, what they would need to come into compliance, did you notify them and, and let them know what the process would be for that particular business? Yes. And to date, have you received any applications from the property owner or the business owner to conduct a nightclub use for the property located at uh, 1547, 1551 Northwest 119th Street? No. Um, if the property owner were to continue to unlawfully conduct business as a nightclub while only licensed as a restaurant for CU, would they be required to shut down? They, they would be required to seek that cease and desist that operation. Um, if I may, for the sake of it, I would say either you would need to comply fully with what your CU allots, which is to operate as a restaurant, and continue in that capacity, but to continue to operate outside that parameter is grounds to revoke your CU. Okay, um, no further questions for this witness at this time. However, the city would reserve uh, additional time for rebuttal if needed. Okay. Mr. Herrera. Mr. Cook, how are you? I'm well, thank you. I hope you are. I'm great. Mr. Cook, uh, who did you speak to from Arena Grill and Lounge? I cannot say I recall the name because you talked about in 2018 when I just know it was a woman at that time who I spoke with. We spoke in the conference room. We spoke at length about the um, operations. Okay. Uh, do you know she understood what you were telling her? I feel very comfortable. She was fairly cogent to what I was saying. Okay. And you explained to her the difference between a nightclub and a restaurant and a bar, correct? Extensively. Okay, did you provide her any documents? I did. What documents did you provide her? Application for the um, 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 business, for the um, board of adjustments to allow for the um, operation of a nightclub. Let me ask you something. You read the definition of a nightclub and a restaurant, and you were asked, uh, a hypothetical question where you seem to have had to add certain words or inferences to the definition of a restaurant that operates past 11 p.m. You remember that line of questions? I do. Is it fair to say that a restaurant has to shut down at 11 p.m. if they operate in the city of Miami? And that's a yes or a no.
I would say no, it doesn't say your restaurant has to shut down at um, at 11 p.m. per se. Would it be outside the code for a restaurant to have a musician like a guitarist or a yes. set? It would. Mm -hmm. Where does it say that in your code that you can't have it once a night? So to operate as a, in the confines of, it, of, of what you're doing, you have to have a music and entertainment license. So, so a restaurant, in addition to being able to serve food and alcohol and beverages to its uh, patrons, if they want to have a guitarist once a night on the weekends, they have to have a different special uh, um To your um, question, um, tell us her, if you're, um, um, Joseph Herrera, excuse me, if you're going to have like one entertainer, then you wouldn't need to. If you're going to have multiple entertainers, such as groups or, you know, uh, um, or um, ensemble or stuff like that, you need to have a entertainment license. So, so it depends. So the, the, the issue then becomes a fact issue about frequency of, of entertainment, correct? No, it's not frequency. I'm sorry to be, you know, you know, to your to your point. If you're going to have an entertainer and it's just one individual and she or he is going to be playing a guitar. Um, between the parameters of before 11 p.m., then you can do that without any incident. So you said before 11 p.m., but you said yeah. restaurants can operate past 11 p.m., correct? Oh, so if we go to the definition. Definition doesn't say anything about shutting down at 11 p.m. with all due respect. So let's, let's, let's just go to the definition. I'm reading it. It's not saying shutting down. It's just saying what you what you are called. And then our other code sections say if you're operating in these parameters of this definition, then there's certain permits that you need to obtain to do so. So let's say to your question that I am a restaurant and that I have an entertainer that is operating that we're going to be serving food, having alcohol. I just have an alcohol and I have an entertainer and we are functioning past 11 o'clock. Per the definition, you a nightclub. And per being a nightclub, I code in section 4, 204, and types of uses says that you need to have a special exception to function in that capacity. In this instance, that wasn't obtained. Okay. So, yes, you can function past 11 o'clock, but then if you're doing entertainment, you're doing dancing, you're doing other things, and you'll have license to serve food or Alcohol beverages, you're a nightclub. But with all due respect, Mr. Cook, my question is more specific. My question is that random time, that once in a while time that you have a musician come into your restaurant, are you saying that because everyone yes. lives in a blue moon, I still have to become a yes. nightclub in the restaurant? Yes. Okay. And that's your interpretation of it, correct? No, it's not what the code says. It's your interpretation of it. No, it's not the code. It's not an interpretation. It's what the letter says in the definition. Okay. Because I'm looking at the code that that I was provided, and it's in the code actually, and there's no durational uh, language in the code as to how many times constitutes a nightclub versus how many it, times. It, that's right. And to your point, because it isn't any generation, so any operation means you do function as a nightclub. So it's a subjective interpretation. It's not subjective. Yeah. So um, the code says if you operate past eleven o'clock. And you have license to serve food or beverage, alcoholic beverages, and you provide entertainment, what is one time a week, a ten time, a seven times a week, your nightclub. Okay. Is it fair to say that based on your zoning districts that where the Anna Grill and Lounge is located, it would qualify for a special use exemption to operate as a nightclub? With caveats, you can apply for the application. The property is zone C1, which is commercial. Within that commercial environment, you are allowed to operate as a nightclub through the special exception. As I stated earlier, there are distance separation requirements when you operate as a nightclub. And as such, they would need to, in this instance, because you have residential immediately to the north of it that abuts the property, they would need distance separation from the residential. And that minimum distance separation for a nightclub is 
1,500 feet, which they don't meet. So you need a variance, correct? You would need a variance. 2,500 feet from a religious institution. 2,500 feet from a school. 1,500 feet from a park or recreational use. Okay. Let me ask you something. The city asked you about security protocols. You remember that question? Yes, sir. How do you guarantee that your patrons aren't criminals? Well, I don't know if that has anything to do with your security protocols. Your security protocols is for you to have security and um, um, operational um, things implemented to help mitigate such what you'll call criminal activities or to prevent it. And, and one of it to the um, deputy city attorney's um, question and to, I think to your thinking is that as part of our review of the special exception, we would be talking about security and what security you would need to have as a nightclub operator to help um, govern your property to prevent instances from taking place. Let me ask you a question. Is the city of North Miami a high crime area? I'm not able to speak to that, sir. I'm not, I don't know. Are you aware of a city of North Miami employee that was employed at Arenas? No, I'm not aware of it. Okay. Does the name Abraham Valdez ring a bell? Yes. Abraham Valdez and I were colleagues at the city of Miami. And he worked in the zoning department there. And through my interactions through that occasionally, I knew him on that capacity. Yes. Okay. Is he now employed with the city of North Miami? No. He never, as far as I know, he's never been employed with the city of North Miami. Let me ask you a question. You said in 2018 you had this conversation with the owners of Arenas? I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. So for two, almost three years now, uh, you've known about them operating this business, correct? I've known that we have issued them a certificate of use to function as a restaurant, yes, sir. Right, but and my I question that I had advised them during that meeting that if you wanted to out or operate outside of those parameters, these were are the steps that you would need to take to do so. Okay, but, but I guess my, my more specific question is you've known about the operation of this business because the city of North Miami isn't, isn't an overly huge municipality. When you talk about them functioning as a restaurant, yes, I've known that they function as a restaurant. So you've never driven by this location during the day? I have been to the site before, but not for that specifically. But I went there for, uh, for another reason. And frankly, I had a resident who was next door come out to me specifically to complain about that site and the okay. noise and the music from it. And what was that? Say, I'm not really sure of the, of the day to say, sir, when that take, what date it was. It was, um, it's been like a couple of years ago, sometimes, sometimes before that. Yes, it was, you know. But, but ironically, it wasn't until uh, March of this year that the city of North Miami targeted this business. Correct. I don't know if it's irony about it. Uh, about it, but I just know that incident took place that the um, that the city police department in their operations felt it was necessary to um, come to the site. So you don't know anything about the city of North Miami targeting this business after the March incident, correct? I don't have any. I, I, don't, I can't speak to that about the city of uh, targeting anybody. I just know that police, did, in their wisdom, operate within the confines of their duties and, and, and they're doing their duties. And again, let, let, him about that. let me ask you something, because you've been, you, you've been in zoning and planning for a while, and I understand you were at the city of Miami, correct? That's correct. Uh, are there establishments that, unfortunately, even if they operate within the confines of the law, their patrons tend to engage in criminal activity or maybe criminals? 
I'm sure that does take place. Yes, sir. I mean, I mean, I haven't, you know, specific, but yes, you know, that takes place. To your point, you don't have control over that, per se. That's mm -hmm. why you have security to mitigate it. And if you have gone through the proper processing to have the proper security out there, it could help mitigate that or prevent it. But, but even with proper security, there, there could be criminal activity that goes on, correct? Could be. So it's not a blanket statement? No, I don't think this is a blanket statement. I just have one last question for you. On the application that was submitted for the certificate of use, do you provide any, and I understand that you had a meeting, but my, my question goes specifically to that certificate of use application. The bare bone application, the application packet, does it provide a definition of what a nightclub, restaurant, and bar and lounge is to the applicant, and is it translated into French or French Creole and Spanish? No, we don't have um, with the application um, a list of definitions of the different uses that are allowed within the city. We don't. No, sir. Do you tell them where they can find it? Yes. If, it, if, if it's germane to the conversation that we are having, then we have that discussion about what are the parameters for certain uses and where they can take place within the city. And if you need some kind of special permit to do that use, then we'll go over that conversation. We'll have that conversation with the applicant at that time. And is it fair to say that you, when they come to apply, do you try to help them out? Do you ask questions maybe to make sure that they're applying for the right certificate of use or the right uh, designation? Yeah, we do. You know, we want to be uh, proactive to help, you know, applicant to be in compliance. You know, so yes, you know, that's part of our, um, you know, service to the city is making sure that the safe and the safe and welfare of the city is paramount to zoning. I have nothing further from you, Mr. Cook. Any rebuttal? Cook, when you um, said in your testimony that you had spoke to um, the business owner a couple of years back about the process of, of uh, obtaining licensure as a nightclub, do you recall um, whether that woman you spoke to held herself out to be a representative of the Arena Lounge? So, Forgive me. Um, um, she she presented herself as the owner, and if I may say full disclosure, not to open up. I mean, after they were even um, um, cited in the most recent thing, I had a conversation with this same individual who I spoke to those few years ago extensively about the situation and what they need to know. And I told, and even if. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we had that conversation on the steps in front of the um, community planning and development department office, I expressed to her then that you remember that we had this conversation a few years ago, saying that you needed to have a special exception to function as a nightclub, and she used the term that the um, um, that the honorable um, attorney stated, "Oh, that the city is targeting us." That's and let's go back to the definition of nightclub and restaurant under the city's code. Does a nightclub become a nightclub just due to hours, or is it a two-pronged approach, meaning that if a business provides entertainment as well as operates after 11 p.m., then at that point, it ceases to be a restaurant and then becomes a nightclub? Madam Deputy, as I understand it and read the code, it is a two-pronged approach, as you stated. You have to have, it's not just, it's not or, it's and, as it says. You know, if you have the um, um, license to sell alcohol or food and where music, dance, floor shows, or other forms of entertainment are provided for guests, and it's operating after 11 o'clock, your nightclub. And would it be also unlawful for the business to advertise as such, to be open after hours and providing entertainment? It is, it would be in violation of what their certificate of use has, um, has um, allowed them to do if you're functioning as a restaurant 
and it would be a violation as such that what it, it is grounds for us through advertisement to to have code enforcement excuse me code compliance to address that to them and say you are in violations with this advertisement and it must cease and desist okay i'm going to share my screen again to show you an advertisement for this business mr cook can you see my screen yes ma'am okay this is an advertisement for the location do you see the hours listed in this advertisement i do is it after the hours of 11 p.m it is it does is it advertise any form of entertainment in the form of music dj band it does so in looking at this advertisement would you feel that this business is a nightclub or a restaurant under, under the definition of the city zoning code? Nightclub. So if I were to tell you that this particular business is advertising that this is their advertisement, but the CU that they have is only for restaurant, is that a violation of the city zoning code? Yes, it is. Are you familiar with any other recent applications by um, restaurants, uh, by nightclubs to operate in the city? Are you familiar yes. with Are you familiar with the Cave? I am. What type of establishment is the Cave? I object. I object to this. It's outside. This it's outside the scope of the four corners of the citation and the notice for today. This day. So earlier in your um, questioning by Mr. Herrera, Mr. Herrera questioned you about security plans, correct? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any recent nightclubs that were licensed and where the board put certain conditions on their approval um, based off of security? Same objection. It's outside the four corners of the citation and the notice for today. Your Honor. I'll, I I'll allow it. I'll um, I'll allow it. Yes, ma'am. Can you elaborate? So we had one called The Club that is located on Northwest 7th Avenue, and they went through the special exception process to function as a nightclub. And one of the conditions that were imposed and reviewed was um, security. And then, and what was their security plan and their um, and their method of operation as it relates to their security? And in that process, does the board have the ability to revisit conditions of approval or bring back a, a licensed person to to modify those conditions if there was any issues with the business? Yes, if they're in violation of that special exception approval then that's ground to either revoke it or bring them back to before the board and the board to review and they could either add more conditions to con to allow for the establishment to continue or the board could just could be could be could choose to just revoke the approval but that didn't happen in this case correct that's correct you did not you've not had any issues from that business all those conditions have been complied with we have not had any issues that has been brought to my attention. But the city did not have the opportunity to impose those conditions on Arena Lounge because it failed to go through the process, correct? That's correct. And you said that you had recently done a, a site visit um, unrelated to this morning's hearing or any of the citations that you were at the location for something completely unrelated and that a neighbor came out and spoke to you and complained about the the premises can you elaborate on what the complaint was noise um people gathering in the parking lot um um um, um the activities that were going on in the parking lot in this instance you know it was a language barrier on my end that i am not proficient in spanish so i was using my phone translator but he was pretty adamant about the situation and you know saying something needs to be done I mean, I'm sure because I was in the city's car that he is, you know, he saw that and came over immediately. 
And uh, Mr. Cook, are you familiar with the CU application? Yes, ma'am. Is there um, a signature included on that application? Yes. And is there an attestation part of that application whereby the applicant certifies that they've reviewed the application and all information contained within and, and understands? Yes, ma'am. And is you or staff available to answer any questions if an applicant were to have any questions about the CU process before them signing this application? Are, are you available via in person, email, phone, if they were to have any issues? Yes, we are. And do you customarily, within your job role, answer those types of inquiries for applicants and guide them through the process? Yes, we do. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor, of this witness. I just have a couple because they were brought up. Uh, they were, okay, they, just so you know, after this witness, I want to take a five minute recess. That, that's fine with me too. Um, Mr. Cook, you were shown an advertisement. Is advertising a violation of any city code? Can you point yes. me? Yes. Show me where it is. <laughs> Could the uh, deputy city attorney entertain me with that? <laughs> Show me where it is because I don't see it here. So I believe um, my line of questioning was in regards to the nightclub being licensed as a restaurant, but advertising itself out to be a nightclub. But you, which but is the you, purpose of today's hearing. Right. It's a violation of the zoning code. Right. But he's he, he made it seem like advertising is a violation. I'm looking at the code. And it doesn't say anywhere about advertising being a code, a code violation. Oh, As, to your point, um, Mr. Herrera. Advertisement in of itself, as you know, is a <laughs> first amendment right, is, is, is not a violation. The violation, as the uh, deputy attorney is saying, is the content, content of the advertisement. That you're advertising an operation that is in violation of what the code allows for you to do. You do not have the licenses to function as a nightclub is defined. And you're advertising that you are a nightclub functioning from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. with DJs, music, and things to that effect. That's the violation. Have you seen these advertisements before today? In, only in briefing. Only in briefing? Right. It was provided to you by the city or somebody at the city for today, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. You've, you've never seen these advertisements? No, sir. I can't say I have prior to those contacts. You have no idea how the city got a hold of these advertisements, correct? That's correct, sir. So we have no authentication of these advertisements, correct? I guess no. I, yes, I mean, no. sure. What the authentication is, if it's out there on the internet and you print it, that's, that's, that's the extent of it. Well, you don't know who collected this information, right? True, true, true. I don't know. Well, we don't know where they got it from. I cannot attest to where it was obtained. You're correct. We don't know who made it, right? I cannot attest to that. Okay. Uh, the uh, you said your Spanish is kind of shaky. Am I correct? I was being generous. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, the application that that the city asked you. And pointed out to you the uh, for the certificate of use that has the uh, the information provided by the city where they're saying that they sign it and they attest that it's all true and the application and everything that they understood it and they attested to. You remember that like that question? Yes, sir. That application doesn't have the definition of a restaurant, bar, or lounge, correct? Yes, sir. It doesn't. So they're not attesting that they understood what the definitions were, correct? The, what they are attesting is that the operation that they are saying that they're going to do is what they're going to do but they understood the application but not the definitions because the definitions aren't within the four corners of the application correct so i think what was state has been established too i think the state establishes what uh, a restaurant is so if you're going through that process as a, um as an entrepreneur to open up a restaurant at the state level they tell you what a restaurant is and under that and it speaks to that even in our code that yes i'm operating as a restaurant so you you would have to presume if you at this far along you know what a restaurant is 
Well, can I ask you a question? You, you were at the city of Miami for, what, 10 years? 11 years, sir, yes. Is it fair to say that the definitions of what a restaurant, a bar and lounge, and a nightclub is in the city of North Miami differ from the definitions that, are, that the city of Miami uses? Could be, but I do know that we had a special exception process to allow for businesses to operate as a nightclub. Yeah, what we call, what they call a supper lounge. So, right. Supper so, club. Supper club. So, so unless, unless the definitions are within the application that they're certifying, they, you can't really take that, that signature and that statement above that signature to the bank sort of speak, because the definitions aren't within the four corners of that application. Well, you know, Mr. Attorney, uh, Mr. Herrera, ignorance is not um, innocence. I'm not saying that, that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm asking well, a question. I, I'm saying it's that. Illegal, it's illegal but to that. Because they did not potentially know what a restaurant is, which I think, you know, we have, you know, we know what a restaurant is just by going to it. The question is that you're trying to do, um, say, is, is there um, um, some you know, fine line between what a restaurant and what a nightclub is, and they are indistinguishable, that they wouldn't know what that difference is in operation. What a restaurant is where you serve food and beverages and people sit down and eat, opposed to where you have music, dance, and entertainment, um, opposed to it's, some, it's something that is ambiguous there. Well, we can be here all day arguing about definitions, Mr. Cook, and I know you, you, you have some experience. I'm not debating that. You're, you're pretty qualified for your position, okay? But we can agree that the, that the definitions of nightclub and lounge versus nightclub versus restaurant differ among certain cities, correct? I would say that's possible. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, that's all I want to get to, okay? By the way, one, one last question. Are you aware that my office has been in contact with the city trying to rectify this problem? I'm not sure, um, Ms. Herrera. I mean, I know I've had some conversations with some attorneys about this situation on behalf of your client. A couple, maybe even you. I don't. I'm not sure, sir. Forgive me if we did, and I don't know. But um, you know, but I can't know to what extent if anybody has talked to um, anyone else in the city about trying to do that. I'm not able to attest to that for sure. All right. That's all. Thank you, Your Honor. Just one question. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Cook, um, if an applicant was looking to change their license and, and legalize it from a restaurant to a nightclub, are they allowed to continue as a nightclub use while they're going through the application process, or are they required to stay within the confines of what their issued CU is while they go through the process of, of obtaining those additional approvals? They, were, they are bound to what the certificate of use has been issued it's for, and that is for a restaurant. It, because you're going through the process of trying to obtain the approvals to function outside of those parameters doesn't, is not um, 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 a license to function in that capacity until you get that approval. You don't, you're not able to function until the approval has been issued to, to operate as such. So they are continuing to be in violation of the zoning code by continuing to operate as a nightclub while they're still inquiring about the process, but not have gotten any permission to do so. That is correct. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, guys, let's take a five minute recess. Um, it's now 1125. We'll be back at 1130. The recording has stopped.
Madam Magistrate, are you ready to begin? I am. All right, I'll start the recording. We're back on the record. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Um, do you have your, who's your next witness? Um, my next witness would be Major Ransom Carter from the North Miami Police Department. Major Carter, um, can I please get you to state your name just for the record? He hasn't been sworn in yet. Oh. Can you please raise your right hand for me? Officer Carter, I mean, Major Carter, can you please raise your right hand for me? He's frozen. You might want to give it a second. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give in today's proceeding shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please say, I do. I do. Thank you. I can get you to please state your name for the record. My name is Ransom Carter. I'm a major over the patrol section, North Miami Police Department. And what is your experience and background as a police major? Uh, I have uh, been with the uh, department for 16 years and I am, um, I've worked patrol, canine, SWAT, and um, I've worked on the west side where the, um, the arena bar and grill is located in various other areas of the city. And in your job duties as a law enforcement officer, are you familiar with the business establishment located at 1547 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, and what type of establishment is it? It's always been a restaurant. Uh, uh, restaurant. When I was working on the road as a sergeant and officer, and then came uh, once I became a major, uh, it also was uh, listed as a restaurant. And um, has this business been the subject of uh, an extraordinary number, uh, extraordinary number of uh, calls from the police department? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you elaborate? Yes, I can. Uh, so, between March and July, we we took forty six reports from the location. Um, of those uh, forty six reports. Um, we had 18 reports that were generated that were loud music. Loud music was heard coming from the business. And these reports were generated by, uh, predominantly generated by, uh, the midnight shift, which begins at 11 PM and they, uh, their tour duty, uh, uh, ends at 11 p uh, I'm sorry, at 9 AM. So they work overnight. So of those 46 reports, Predominantly written by midnight, 18 of those reports that were generated were loud music calls, uh, were loud music, loud music was heard coming from the business. Um, in 17 other reports, uh, there were numerous vehicles outside of the business and, and patron, patrons observed walking into the business. There were six reports that were generated where uh, management, where officers met with management to discuss uh, issues that were observed and then there were four instances where oh, i'm sorry yeah four instances where offenses occurred either battery or aggravated battery and are the majority of the calls coming in from the police department in which the police department is responding are those occurring after the hours of 11 p.m yes ma'am uh as i said uh the 
midnight shift generated most of these calls and they began their shift at 11 p.m. Um, they have roll call at 11 p.m. So by the time they get on the road and and get to the business, it's probably it's probably 11 between 1130 and 12 o'clock. And this is when they were observing the loud music. This is when they observe uh, um, the other instances that I named earlier. And are you aware of any violent incidents which have occurred at the location within the time period that you described that um, police reports were generated? Yes, ma'am. Starting back in March of uh, March 13th, uh, 2021, we had an incident where it was aggravated battery, where there were numerous victims. Uh, in this instance, there was a fight on uh, within the business or in the premises of the business which spilled out into the parking lot and in which case the two subjects or the subject who was driving the vehicle uh, attempted to run over uh, two employees who worked for Arena Bar and Grill. Uh, the, the subject was successful in hitting both. And then the one, the one victim who was a security guard was actually run over by the car intentionally and then a short, short uh, distance from there, the car crashed, and we were able to take the subject into custody. Um, in April, we had another aggravated battery where an individual was struck in the back of the head on the premises. Uh, in June, we had another aggravated battery where there were two victims that were sitting in a car, sitting in a vehicle, waiting on a patron to come out. And while they were waiting, they were assaulted in the parking lot. And then July 4th was the latest incident where we had a, an intoxicated uh, subject on scene who got into a fight with a security guard and uh, he was arrested. And you said that you were familiar with this restaurant uh, originally as operating as a restaurant, correct? That's what I was, that's what I, I, I I understood it to be was a restaurant. And then at some point they changed their use to another type of use, or, or did you guys document a, a difference in the level or, or type of activity at the location? Well, there was an increase in, uh, increase in uh, violent activity. So, um, we, we gear our policing towards issues. Um, so now where you have problems with violence, uh, obviously we have to spend a little more time observing the business, spending time at the business, making sure that to try to deter crime, deter violence. And so that's how, that's how they came on top. Okay. Okay. And are these violent activities documented in police reports generated by the North Miami Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And in those four instances I, I just named, but between those four, once we have the one instance in, incident occur, and they've had other incidents in the past. Um, the one thing about mid, on the midnight shift is that you pay attention to the businesses that are open. The businesses that are open are businesses that could possibly have crime. Either a crime occurred to them or crimes occur within them. So they were, we were always going to spend, spend time there because it's a business that's open. And it just so happens that they also had uh, violent crimes that were occurring on, on, on the premises. And then... Are the violent crimes the only type of um, interaction that the midnight shift is having with the, with the business? Is there any other type of calls that um, the police department is responding to during the midnight hours? Well, predominantly, uh, and you're talking about specifically just this business, correct? Correct. Um, Predominantly, that's what that's those are the issues that we're addressing. We do business checks. Um, however, there are surrounding um, surrounding residences that complain about make complaints about the noise, uh, the loud music and things of that nature. So it's not directly 
directly responding to the business, but it's the the surrounding residences. There's residences just north of that the business uh, on 120th Street. The business is on 119th and on 120th. There's residences there, and, and there's been complaints about loud music. Okay. And you also stated that the police department has come out in, um, recently on a number of calls uh, for violent activities occurring at the premises, correct? Yes, ma'am. And would it be your opinion that um, this premises um, and the public area that's around that premises has become a meeting place for persons that are engaged in criminal activity, um, that it would create a detriment to the health, safety, uh, and welfare of the surrounding community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anytime you have alcohol and, and, and you have people who are um, prone to, I guess we can say prone to violence because everyone reacts to alcohol differently, but evidently in this instance right here, we have people who are, who are consuming alcohol and they're committing uh, violent crimes. So, uh, it's a it's a it's a, it's a recipe for for debt for the detriment of the surrounding community. No further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Uh, but we will reserve some additional time for rebuttal if needed. Mr. Herrera. Yes. Major, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, you know, could be better. Question: How long have you been in law enforcement? 16 years in January. 16? 16 years, sir. All exclusively with the city of uh, North Miami? Yes, sir. Would you consider the city of North Miami a high crime area? I would consider the city of North Miami to have uh, the same issues with crime as any other mid-sized city. No greater, no lesser. We have pockets of, of areas of concern, and we have very, uh, very good areas. As a matter of fact, over the last uh, a few years, we've had a decrease in crime. So, Do you have gang activity in North Miami? Yes, sir, like every other mid-sized to large city. Compared to Miami Gardens, how's your crime rate? I couldn't answer that intelligently because I don't have the Miami Gardens numbers in front of me. You testified as a number of violent incidences at this, uh, at this, the subject location. Uh, how do you know that they were directly related to the operation of the, of the establishment? When you say directly related, uh, can you just clarify that for me? Well, they're they're using the city has brought you here and has presented these arrest affidavits and these crime reports and these incident reports as somehow linking arena bar and grill to some kind of criminal activity. So I'm asking you, since you're the witness on this, can you explain to me and intelligently articulate what the direct nexus between arena bar and grill and criminal activity is? Sure. Okay. So March 13th, there was an aggravated battery. That aggravated battery occurred on the street in front of, or actually occurred in the parking lot of the arena bar and grill. Prior to the aggravated battery, there was a bat, there was a fight on the premises. On April 11th, there was an aggravated battery. And in this instance, the individual was struck inside of the business. On June 12th, there was an aggravated battery where two victims were sitting in the parking lot of Arena Bar and Grill, and they were struck, requiring stitches. And then on July 4th, there was another battery inside of the business with the, where the security guard was struck. In two of these instances, instances employees from Arena Bar and Grill were victims. So I, I think it is directly connected. Well, the parking lot incident, could that have been anybody? 
the subject came out of the arena bar and grill. Are there any other businesses that operate in that strip mall? There are, there are a number of other businesses, but I believe that's the only one that operates after, uh, after hours or after 11. How long have you been working that area? I've worked off and on in that area for 12, 13 years. And for the last 12 or 13 years, you've driven by the same establishment, correct? I have driven by there. I, but when, as I, when I was a sergeant, yes. And that was uh, probably four years ago. Okay, so, so roughly 2018 to the present, you've driven by that location several times, correct? No, from, uh, from 2005 to 2018, I've, I, I regularly worked in that area, yes. Okay, from, 2018, from 2018 to 2021, I, I have not. Major, you're going to have to repeat that again because we didn't hear the answer. I'm sorry. Uh, so from 2005 to 2017, 18, uh, I was an uh, officer either an officer or a sergeant. So yes, I was in that area frequently. From 2018 to 2021, I uh, was promoted. So I, I was not, I have not driven in that area after, after 11 o'clock. Okay, so as, as a major, you're not necessarily roving the, the city, correct? No. Okay. So your, your direct knowledge is simply based on the reports that were generated by other officers? Yes, sir. Okay, so you don't have any first-hand knowledge of this? No, sir. And is it fair to say that these arrest reports aren't indicative of any innocence or guilt? They're just simply arrest reports documented by officers, correct? The arrest affidavits simply show probable cause that an event most likely, uh, a crime most, ha most likely took place at the uh, said location. And, and I said so. Sorry, and so currently, since these are 2021 cases, I assume that some of these are still processing themselves through the, through the court system, and we don't know how they turned out, correct? Correct. So we don't even know if, a, if an actual crime was committed. We just have a report of an incident that you responded to. No, we have, we have enough information. There's enough evidence to support the arresting of uh, the individuals that were, were taken into custody. Okay, there was me, enough evidence to. Let me, let me rephrase it then. You had enough probable cause to arrest, but it doesn't mean anything. It simply means that something happened there. You were given information, and from that information, you derived probable cause and you put handcuffs on somebody. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. Okay. Is it fair to say that? your department began targeting uh, arenas after the March incident made the news? I think targeting is a improper, would be an improper term. We use intelligence-based policing in which we take our resources and we deploy our resources in the areas where the stats or trends say that we need to deploy them in order to deter crime, in order to affect crime, in order to affect arrest. Uh, anytime you have a situation where there's a fight at a night at a club, and it's especially in North Miami where we don't have many clubs that operate at night or many restaurants that operate at night, um, obviously, uh, once that happens, it will draw our attention and we will direct our resources so that we can prevent that from happening again. And that's not... That's not to uh, hurt the business. That's actually to help the business so that we can deter criminals from coming into the business and, and, and disrupting, uh, disrupting the flow. Well, let me, uh, let me break that down for you. You said that you use some kind of intelligence statistical-based system, and then I'm, I'm paraphrasing what you said. You said you use some kind of statistical base where there's an elevated level of crime, and then you target or you focus on that area and deploy intelligence resources to prevent crime. Is that a fair recap of what you said? 
I said it is intelligence based policing, meaning that we we base our policing not on personalities, not on uh, my like or dislike for someone is based on the fact that the numbers, our numbers suggest that there's crime trends here. And, and now we are we're going to address those trends. So so uh, and, and I and I, I guess I guess let, let me just say you use objective criteria, you use numbers, right? Numbers don't lie. Here is here is the question that I have based on that statement. The uh, evidence produced or provided by the city indicates that in 2021 there are some incidences after that march or april incident that we just discussed right so before that in 2020 there's one arrest and based on the incident reports where there was no arrest uh it looks like maybe there's 10 other incidents in 2020 so that's an average of 0.9 a month so what Increasing crime trends are you talking about, Major? Well, uh, a, a, a gentleman was run over. Two people were run over, actually. Two people were targeted. One person was run over intentionally. Uh, that, that becomes an issue. And then just less than a month later, you have another aggravated battery. That's a trend. That's a trend of violent crime. Um, as far as what happened in 2020, I wasn't the major over the patrol section, so I can't, uh, again, I can't intelligently discuss that. Um, but also, too, we have to understand that not only is the Arena Bar and Grill an issue, uh, uh, a location that we are paying attention to, there's other, there's other locations on the west side that we're paying attention to as well. So... Again, we use intelligence-based policing. It's, it's very objective. Now, not only do we use intelligence-based policing, but we also use common sense. And if someone, if we have two incidents where violent crime took place and there's alcohol involved, and this is the only business that's open, or I think believe it's two other businesses that are open on the west side at that time. There's a gas station and a coin laundry. There's three businesses that are open. Also, too, we have to understand that the likelihood of the patron of patrons at arena bar and grill the likelihood of the patron at the gas station the likelihood of the patron at corn laundry of being becoming victims of crime is just as strong so we also are not just going there to try to deter the crime inside of the arena bar and grill we're also trying to deter crime from happening to the victims who are coming out so there is a is a multi-pronged uh, approach to the policing a multi-pronged approach to the way that we address the businesses across the city, including the arena bar and grill. And just a question here. I, I'm, I'm reading the, uh, the charges of these, uh, alleges, the, these alleged incidences that you claim gave you this intelligence-based policing uh, to focus in that area. And nobody here was charged with any kind of uh, alcohol-related crime. So my question to you is, how do you draw the nexus that they were getting the alcohol from the arena bar and lounge? And I'm talking about the March incident with the car, because that was in the news and the subsequent incident. The business sells alcohol, and you're absolutely right in that I, there's no way for me to prove that they did not have that they did have alcohol. But then again, there's no way for you to prove that they didn't because they do serve alcohol. There. So, um, you know, I. I Regardless of the alcohol aspect of it, a violent crime occurred on that scene, on, on that at that location. Two violent crimes occurred at that location, according to what we're what we're talking about. And there's four total between March and July. And in your opinion, you can prevent violent crime by properly licensing a business. Because that's what you're here to testify about. No, I'm here to testify about the violent crime that occurred. Thank you. I'm here to. You're, 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 this, is, this is about a license revocation hearing. You're here to testify about crime in connection with revoking my client's business license. So my question is, can you fairly predict crime to a business? Well, yes, absolutely. Let's think about it. If, if, I, if we're working under the assumption that this is a restaurant, then... 
if if I'm working on the assumption it's a restaurant, then we police in a different way. If we're working under the assumption, if we know for a fact that it's a nightclub, now we operate in a different way because we now know that that question that you asked about alcohol, we now know that there's alcohol there. And we know that people consume alcohol in nightclubs. And because of that, now we police we can we can approach our policing a little different. But don't we know that people consume alcohol at restaurants too? Not at McDonald's, not at Burger King, not at Denny's. Oh, I was not aware that the definition of the restaurant in the code was strictly the fast food. You asked me about a restaurant. You, I, 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 I wasn't talking about code. You asked me about a restaurant that, that those are restaurants. But you just told me that people consume alcohol at nightclubs. People don't consume alcohol at restaurants. Uh, I'm sure they do, but not at Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Denny's, IHOP. Um, they don't, and those are restaurants that are open in our, in our city. So I would have to say no. Now I'm sure at other restaurants, they, they do, but not at those. Are there other restaurants? That is- we can address. Are there any other restaurants in the city of North Miami that serve alcohol along with their food? Uh, I believe Flanagan's does. But Flanagan's has an off-duty officer there as well. So yeah. kind of deters crime there. Is that the only restaurant that, that uh, serves food and alcohol? Only one I'm aware of, unless you can, you can point out the other. Well, no, I'm just curious because you, you kind of made a statement that if, if, you go to an, if you go to a nightclub or bar, it's presumed that you're consuming alcohol and therefore it kind of gives you some kind of inference that you're leaving there intoxicated. I think that would be a fair inf- inference. Okay. So not that, you leave, not that you leave intoxicated, but that you have consumed alcohol there. That's the purpose of a nightclub, generally. That's one of the purposes. Okay. And if, it, if uh, this business had allegedly been, uh, I guess, her certificate of use would have been a nightclub, would you have patrolled it differently? Absolutely. Because now you know that you... <clears throat> Now that you now you know that you're dealing with individuals who've been drinking, you know that now now that you're dealing with people who are, who've been drinking, you know that there's a propensity for violence with people who are drinking. There's a propensity for fights. Not that it, not that every person who drinks fights. Not that every person who drinks is violent. But there is an opp- there's a chance for it. There's a better chance for somebody being violent after drinking than there is after eating a hamburger. By the way, does the city require off duty officers? At uh, at establishments that serve alcohol, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, I know there's some there are places that require that um that request uh uh off duty, but I'm not sure about our code. But it's not a city requirement. I think Mr. Cook could probably. Uh, answer that question a, a little more intelligently than I could. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What did you guys, and I just, I keep on going back to this because it, it seems to, to it, just based on the numbers, right? Cause I don't, I don't want to say that, that there's some profiling or targeting going on here, but just the numbers seem to indicate that I'm sorry. Uh, after the incident in March, all of a sudden it's just, just like, the world came down on, on this establishment. And, and I'm trying to reconcile what you're telling me versus the statistics that I have in front of me. Well, sir, like, let me ask you this question. If it was your son who was targeted with a car and was, uh, was, was run off, um, wouldn't you want us to spend more while he was working? Well, I don't Is know. anyone else having an issue? Yeah. Um, hearing you, um, Mr. Carter. I'm sorry, Major Carter. Uh, um, Mr. Herrera, did you hear I, I the response or the question? 
I heard a little bit of, of what he's asking. Um, but if, if he what, wants what did he ask? I'm sorry. Mr. Major, can you repeat it again? Yes, ma'am. I, I asked a question um, because part of our job is to is to prevent crime. Part of the pro part of our, our job is to prevent crime. The other part is to is to to protect our citizens, including them employees at a business if, if your son was the was working at this business and someone wants to spend more time there making sure that I, Did we lose him? Yeah, I think like they're trying to adjust his. Um... And he may have logged out accidentally. Major, are you still there? No, he's not here. We'll have to either magistrate give him a chance to sign back in, but yeah. he's completely offline. Okay. Does anyone has his phone number and can reach out to him? He's texting me now, Magistrate. Just a, just a moment. Okay. He says he's trying to sign back in. Okay. What can we do in the meanwhile? What do you guys suggest? Because he's probably having issues, and I know that we have other witnesses. Can 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 this? Can he doesn't object if, if um, opposing counsel. If, if um, I don't know if opposing counsel will be okay with it. The city is willing to call its next witness and then recall our prior witness um, whenever he's available. He, How do you feel, Mr. Herrera? Who's your next witness? Okay, so the city's next witness is going to be Officer Roach. Okay. Are you okay with proceeding with Officer Roach? Mr. Herrera, and then you can go come back to your questioning of Officer, I mean, Major um, Carter. Yeah, that was fine. I was also going to ask the city attorney if she wanted to speak for five minutes because maybe off the record we can speak. Oh, uh, Major is back, but 
Go ahead. Um, um, if opposing counsel wants to take a brief recess and, and give me a call, I'm okay with that too. It, it's up I to your honor. If your honor has no problem, I think five or 10 minutes and, you know. Okay, so let's let's try to make it brief. Let's do five minutes since we have, you know, officers who should be back on the road and um, they're waiting for their turn to testify. Let's take a five minute recess, everyone. Thank you, um, Major. Um, they're gonna take a, a five minute recess so they can, um, they can talk and then we'll be right back, okay? Okay, and I apologize for my connection. That's okay, sir. All right. The recording has stopped.
we're back on the record? Yes. Do we have an announcement or will we? Um, the, the city is um, willing to proceed at this point. Okay. Maybe All right. Um, ask to recall Major um, Ransom Carter if he's technologically available. I am, but it's uh, it's advising that I'm not allowed to. I see my video has been disabled. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. <laughs> And I think you were still questioning him, right, Mr. Herrera? Yes, I, I think he was trying to draw a uh, an inference or asking me a question if if uh, my relative or family member were were involved or the victim of a crime, uh, wouldn't I want the the city of North Miami Police Department to do something about it? Um, sure. And and I'll give you my my short and sweet response. Unfortunately, I believe in innocence until proven guilty because that's what I do for a living. Uh, I have relatives on your side, so I understand. But on the flip side, I think using the word intentionally run, run over is, is still yet to be determined because that person who was driving the vehicle, guilty or not, is entitled to a fair trial. So uh, while I understand the nature of your job, I understand the nature of mine. So that's the answer you're going to get today. Completely understood. But I can only base it on what we have at the, at the moment, and at the moment, it was uh, he was intentionally run over. So I have nothing further for Major Carter. Unless the city has any questions, we can move on to the next witness. Okay, so a brief rebuttal. Officer Carter, uh, Major Carter, um, would a police officer have to have probable cause that um, there is a violation of state law in order to make an arrest? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Would a police officer have to have probable cause that there was a violation of law that occurred in order to make an arrest? Yes, ma'am. So um, if, in looking at all of these arrests, um, would it be fair to say that there are violations of law occurring either at the establishment or in the area surrounding the establishment? Absolutely, there was more than enough evidence to suggest that a crime had taken place. And to be specific about these incidents that you um, refer to, the one in March, this occurred on March 13th, 2021, and, and is documented in police report number 2021-15646. Yes, ma'am. And the one occurring in April is occurred on April 11, 2021, and is documented in police report number 2021-21958. Yes, ma'am. And the one occurring in June occurred on June 12, 2021, and is documented in police report number 2021-33867. Yes, ma'am. And the one occurring on June 27, 2021, in relations to battery on a law enforcement officer, this occurred on June 27, 2021, and is documented in police report number 2021-36534. I have one, I don't have that one. I have uh, July 4th, 2021. That's the one where the uh, intoxicated subject uh, got into a fight with the security guard at the business. And that's under case number 2021-37788. Okay, perfect. And that would be um, for, for magistrate's reference under exhibit number nine. Um, Major Carter, are you aware of any other um, bars or nightclubs um, operating in the city during the midnight shift? Objection outside the scope of the four corners of the citation. What was the question? Uh, whether there's any other nightclubs operating in the city during the midnight shift. Did you guys hear me? Yeah. No. I, I didn't hear you. I said, I will allow the question overall. Okay. I believe, I, I believe the cave is operates um, after 11 PM. And um, 
does that business generate the same type of police calls or number of police calls that um, is generated by Arena Lounge? No, ma'am. Is it likely that the city was unaware that Arena Lounge was operating as an unlicensed nightclub prior to the incident in question that made news headlines in March of this year? Absolutely. There is no, there is no way to know it. As I said, I believed it was a restaurant until obviously more attention was given to the situation. And is it likely that the city generated extra focus on on this business after it became aware that it was really an unlicensed nightclub yes and earlier in your testimony you said there's a differentiation between how the police would approach in its techniques a restaurant versus a nightclub correct yes is it likely that once the city became aware that it was operating as a nightclub and not a restaurant it did change its approach Yes, absolutely. No further questions, Your Honor. Major, can I ask you a question? I'm sorry, I wasn't going to follow up, but, but now I must. You said that it was likely that the city was unaware that Arenas was operating as a nightclub uh, and so, something to that effect. And I can't really remember the end of the question, but, but I really want to focus on that, that the city was unaware. You remember that question that, that Madam uh, Deputy City Attorney asked you? Yes. But in 2019 and 2018, you've got police reports. We have police reports, but again, uh, 2018 and 2019, I wasn't the major over the uniform patrol section and I wasn't the commander over midnight. So I, I can't attest to those. So, so you can't really stay as a blanket statement that the city wasn't aware that it was operating as a nightclub and the city just didn't enforce its code. What I'm what I what I will say is that is that they were we were no doubt we were under the impression that it was a restaurant and they were not generating the the violent crimes that would lead us to believe. And again, I don't have access to the reports, so I don't know what those reports what those reports were. But uh, um, obviously, uh, it wasn't something that, and I'm sure even then it was something that we paid attention to because it was a business that was open. As I said before, there are not a lot of businesses that are open during during midnight shifts. So businesses that are open, even if it's a restaurant, uh, we're going to still spend time there because we don't want the patron to be uh, become victims of crime. Here's the problem with that statement, Major, with all due respect. And I don't know if you have what I have in front of me in front of you, but this was produced to me by the city. In 2018, he had two incidences of attempted murder, allegedly. Remember, innocent until proven guilty. But he had two incidences of attempted murder. He had an aggravated battery, and he had shots fired in 2019. After 2020, the only thing you've had are, are simple batteries and ag, ag batteries, and a battery on a Leo, which is questionable at best. Okay? So you had two incidences of attempted murder, an aggravated battery, and shots fired in 2018 and 2019. And you're here to tell me that it's not likely that the city knew it was operating as not as a nightclub and knew about it and just didn't enforce its code. Again, uh, I didn't work those shifts and I wasn't respond. I was I wasn't responsible for those shifts. So I, I can't I can't attest to it. I don't have the reports in front of me. I can't attest to it. That's that's fair. Let me ask you a question, because we keep on mentioning the cave. Here. It's like the third time I hear it today. Do you know if the cave ever operated illegally as a nightclub in the city of North Miami? I'm unaware of that. So we're, we're assuming that that they were good citizens and came in and, and applied correctly, correct? Because we're using them as the, the pole star today. Well, I don't want to I don't want to make assumptions. I'm not aware of them operating as anything other than a uh, 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 to code uh, um, lounge, bar and lounge. So I can't attest to whether they were or weren't at any point in time. Well, are they a bar and lounge or a nightclub? I'm not, now, now, I'm, now I'm terribly confused. Well, nightclub, whichever term you want to use. <clears throat> uh, the reason I'm asking is because there, there seems to be a differentiation in your code. So other than that, I, I have no further questions. Just a couple. 
questions, Your Honor? You're on mute. I'm sorry, I was saying call your next witness. Okay, um, can I ask just one question, follow-up question or no? Go ahead. Um, just because I, I didn't ask it, um, but opposing counsel did. Um, Major Carter, are, is attempted murder and shots fired violent crimes? Are those considered violent crimes? Absolutely, those are considered violent crimes. Thank you, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay, call um, your next witness. Next witness will be Officer Roach. Mayor. Yeah, wait for you to be sworn. I was sworn in earlier in the beginning. Oh, you were? Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, if you can state your name for the record. My name is Officer Anthony Roach. And what is your official job title with the City of North Miami? Um, I'm a midnight shift police officer. And in your job duties as a police officer, are you familiar with the business establishment located at 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street? Yes, I'm familiar with the business. What type of business is it? It's a restaurant slash nightclub. And has this business been the subject of an extraordinary number of calls from the police department that you're aware of? Yes. What type of calls is the police department getting? Um, they'll start from loud music. We'll have loud music call from the from the residents in the back to having a uh, fight where we have multiple us and county officers responding to the location. Um, we'll have anything from uh, uh, the gentleman, the victim that was ran over by the vehicle. We have different types of calls as far as coming from the establishment. Sometimes we might get a call there and nothing don't happen and we clear the scene and just going back to patrol in the street. So um, does the North Main Police Department respond to any kind of violent calls at this establishment? Yes, we, we, we responded to numerous violent calls at the location throughout the years and recent, uh, recent times. And has the police department had any interactions with the business owner or business management there? I mean, I spoke with the business owner several several different occasions anytime that we respond to a call there when she's there or if she's not there they have a another guy named pedro he'll say that he's uh part on the business as well and are you aware if um the police department has had to respond to the establishment after the hours of 11 p.m yes we we'll yes we have to respond to that yeah we have calls there several times after 11 p.m have they been asked to close down after the hours of 11 p.m. at any time? Yes, numerous and, times. And, and for what reason were they asked to close down after the 11 p.m. hours? Because of the 11 o'clock, as far as uh, them operating as a restaurant, after 11 o'clock, they should be shut down. But again, the owner, she always refused or give us an uh, attitude or, or, you know, uh, basically kind of use belligerent language towards us as far as when we tell her to uh, shut down her business. But she'll continue to keep running her business as usual. Okay, and um, city does have um, documented police reports. I will not go through all of them, but is it a fair assumption that there are at least 39 police reports that document times in which the North Main Police Department went out to the establishment after the hours 11 p.m. and requested that the establishment shut down because it was 11 p.m. and their license as a restaurant and should be closed down at that time. I yes. object. I object improper foundation as to this knowledge of what's in these supposed 39 incident reports. The, the, the city uh, will accept that. We, we will lay the foundation. Officer Roach, is a police report considered a business record kept within the custody and control of the North Miami Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And as a police officer, do you have access to police reports? Yes, ma'am. I can pull out police reports. And are you familiar with the police reports detailing the events occurring within your assigned area? Yes, ma'am. So when I say that there are 39 police reports on record generated from the police department, from the police records department, stating 
that the police department did respond to establishment after the hours 11 p.m. Would that be an accurate assessment? Yes, ma'am, that's accurate. Do you recall yourself ever going out to the establishment and having intera any interactions after the hours of 11 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. That's uh, I usually work that area. Um, it all depends on the night as far as, like I said, seniority, as far as the type of the, the um, officers that's working. Um, I, I usually work that side of town, and I responded that several times after 11 o'clock. And going back to the violent incidents that have occurred at the establishment, um, do you have any direct knowledge or any, were you on the scene or the lead officer on any of those violent incidents that were um, testified to earlier by Major Carter? Yes, as far as the, uh, the, the victim, that was, victim that was ran over by the vehicle, I was actually a guy who called it in. Um, nobody there at the establishment called 911. I'm the one who called it. I'm the one who found him laying in the middle of the roadway. Um, and he was directly in front of the business. Uh, the other incident where um, it was a, a, a brawl that happened in the front with like over 15, 20 people, it was us and Miami-Dade County that responded there. Miami-Dade County Police Department responded there first. And then once we figured out the jurisdiction, because uh, they was confused, because Miami-Dade County Police was confused with the jurisdiction issue as far as um, is it theirs or ours, but when, once we got there, we knew it was ours, so we took over the scene. That was another incident that I responded to as well. And were these violent activities associated with the business located at 1547, 1551 Northwest 119th Street? Yes, it was located at uh, the arena. And in dealing with these violent um, crimes and, and being the officer on scene and witnessing these, is it your opinion that this establishment and the premises that it's located at, as well as the surrounding areas, has become a meeting place for people that are engaged in criminal activity so as to create a detriment to the health, safety, morals, and welfare of the surrounding community? Objection. Yes. Objection. It calls for a legal conclusion based on the premise that the city's essentially stating word for word what they have to prove and it calls for legal opinion on the officer's part. Your Honor, the city's simply asking an opinion uh, based off of his law enforcement experience and, and dealings with the, the property. Magistrate, you're muted. The whole time I was speaking, I'm sorry. I said overruled. <laughs> I didn't realize I was on mute. You. you may answer, Officer Roach. Repeat that, I'm sorry. Um, you may answer the question. My question was um, whether it's your opinion as a law enforcement officer after being the officer on scene and witnessing all the violent activities that the premises that this business is located at has become a meeting place for persons engaged in criminal activity um, so as to create a detriment to the health, safety, morals, and welfare of the surrounding community. Yes, absolutely. No further questions of this witness at this time, Your Honor. You may proceed, Mr. Herrera. Thank you, Officer Roach. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Could be better. Officer Roach, uh, is it fair to say that... Actually, let me go back. How long have you been an officer with North Miami? I've been an officer for five years with North Miami Police Department, March. To, uh, March 13th, 2022 would be make it fit. So I've been in the department for five years. Is this the only law enforcement department you've been with? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is where you started out. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. The, the city asked you about the so-called incidents, the 39 incidents that you say you have access to and you, you can recall them, correct? Yes, sir. Which incident? Okay, I, I mean, there's, there's a number, right? So if I go... Uh, incident number 2021-0035106. Can you tell me exactly what happened in that incident? That's a case number as far as to our department. I mean, you have to, as far as specific, what occurred. So is it fair to say that you can't tell me the, the incident that's linked to this number? Because that's how you catalog your incidents. Yeah, also, too, it all depends on as far as if you, what, what incident occurred, yes. So is it... But if you give me just a straight number, a case number, no, I just can't recall off the top of my head. 
Well, you just testified that you can recall each of these incidences related to Arena Bar and Lounge. So I'm trying to figure out how, if I gave you this incident number and how the city catalogs it, you wouldn't know what incident this is related to. Objection, Your Honor, goes beyond the scope of direct. I asked in general about incidents occurring at the location. I never went into detail about specific incidents. You're muted, Magistrate. Uh, sir, uh, I'll give you some leeway. Um, can you rephrase the question? I sure can. Officer Roach, yes, the, the city has provided me a, a number of incident numbers, okay, which allegedly depict 39 incidents at related to Arena Bar and Lounge. Are you familiar with those 39 incidences? If, it's a, if it occurred on midnight, I would be familiar with on the days that I work, yes. Okay. Well, that's... You testified specifically when the city laid its foundation that you had access to these 39 incidences and that they arose out of Arena Bar and Lounge. You recall that line of questioning? Yes. If you, if I get provided a case number and I can put it up in the database, I can have access to that report to see what occurred. And if, it's, and if it occurred during my shift. So if I go, so going back to, to the premise of my question, your statement isn't necessarily 100% accurate because if I were to give you a random incident number on this sheet, you couldn't tell me exactly what happened, correct? I have to go into the database and pull up that report. I can't remember 39 reports just based off just numbers and, and present that information to you. That's because a good we have a database. We have a database. We have a database here where we can put in uh, uh, case numbers where I can pull up what occurred, what, what, what occurred during that time. That's a good point because all I got were numbers. So I have no idea what these, incident, what, what these incident numbers are related to. So it's purely speculation we just testified to, correct? You say it is purely speculation? Purely speculation that these 39 incidences that the city just asked you about are related to a rent-up bar and lounge because we don't even know what the incident reports say, correct? I wouldn't call it speculation because you could just pull up arena bar and lounge address in our system and it could pull up every single last report that was generated at that um, location. So Are I wouldn't say that just speculation. Okay. Follow-up question. Per your SOPs, are you required to write a narrative or a brief report as to each of these incidents? Yeah, anytime that we come in, every time you want, you have to write something. Even if it's a narrative, a report has to be generated, or you have to write something in the, in the CAD, at least a note. Again, now, uh, say it again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So if you have to, anytime you respond to a call, even if a no report has been generated, you should have to put something inside of our cat, which is like a, a, a it's a button that says narrative. You can add something to like the little narrative in the comment section, so that they know that you made contact with somebody, or if you responded to the business, or whatever the case may be. Okay. Again, incorrectly, I don't have those reports, and nor do I have what dates these alleged incidences occurred. Okay. So you and I are in the same boat. That's why I'm trying to get at how you knew that these 39 incidences were related to Arena Bar and Lounge. She had the, the, the state attorney asked me a previous question as far as which particular incident, which I was there for those particular incidents that I mentioned earlier. The narrow ones, the two incidents that we're talking about, not the 39, correct? It was, she, spoke, she brought up the two incidents that happened, and those were the two incidents that I was there on scene that I can speak about. Let's go to those two incidences because one of them made the news. I think we're talking about the the March, correct. right? The white Lamborghini with the Lamborghini. Yes. Okay. How did you establish that that person, that that individual, barring the fact that I understand that you're on your end of of, of the spectrum right, as a cop, okay? You simply go on PC. How did you establish that that gentleman that was driving that vehicle was in a rental barn lounge? Because it came from the owner herself. It came out of her mouth. It came from uh, the owner, Madeline Sanchez. That he was there and he got in the car and left, correct? Correct. Came from the owner. As I, as I, as I was going eastbound on 119th Street, I see that uh, a male in the roadway wearing all black. I look to the left. Um, that's when I got out of my vehicle. I was like, hey, what happened? It was like he just got the owner, Madeline Sanchez, 
Uh, she was sitting right there next to the uh, gentleman. She was like, hey, he just got ran over, ran over by a Lamborghini that just left our nightclub. And that's how I know the, night, uh, the Lamborghini came from the nightclub. Could it have simply been an accident? Could it have been, a, could it have been an accident? Simple accident. No, it couldn't, be, it couldn't have been a simple accident. You had a gentleman that was laid on the roadway that was ran over. Simple accidents, right? You know, you have accidents where people cross the road and get, get hit, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you, yeah, of course. So, so how can that, how can you go from a leap of a simple accident where, by the way, this incident happened in March of 2021, this individual is entitled to due process and a trial by a jury. How right. do we get to the proposition that this was an intentional criminal act? How did we get to that proposition? It was a criminal act because mm -hmm. of after, because after the footage came out, the detectives did their, uh, after the detectives and stuff wind up doing whatever they do as far as on their end, as far as, you know, obtaining the footage and everything like that, that it was clearly on video because how the incident transpired when we first got there, the, they downplayed something happened inside of the club. They just said that it was a gym that they was arguing with inside of the parking lot as far as they told him to leave. And the security guard was the, the one that was ran over. He was the guy that had interaction with the driver and the passenger of the Lamborghini telling them, hey, leave the parking lot, leave the parking lot, leave the parking lot. So he wound up becoming involved, and that's when he wound up on the hood of the car. The guy sped off, revved the engine. He wound up on the hood of the car, and that's when he was pushed into the roadway, and they ran him over. And th those are the facts that you put into your arrest affidavit that gave you the probable cause to make an arrest, correct? I wasn't. I started off as the when I I was the first officer that responded there, but I wasn't the officer that took over the scene I could, because I had to leave and go to North Shore uh, Hospital. That's fine, but, but, but ultimately, those are the facts. Okay, that simply gave probable cause to make an arrest. Right, whoever made the arrest and whoever drew up the A form. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Whoever drew the A form, right? Correct. But it doesn't negate the inference or the theory that it could have simply been an unfortunate accident. Correct. No, no, it doesn't negate that. It doesn't okay. negate that. So, so we're talking, that's one. You've given an opinion that it's a, a play, uh, a Rena's Bar and Lounge is a, a location or a business that congregates uh, individuals that are engaged in some kind of criminal activity. You gave that, that opinion, and we've now sort of dissected the March incident, and we can't rule out the theory that it's just a simple, unfortunate accident, correct? No, you can, you, if you want to call it a simple, unfortunate accident, it's just a simple, unfortunate accident. Okay, so, so that's one strike uh, that we took care of. Uh, the other one was some kind of a battery, if I recall correctly, that second incident you testified about? As far as the battery, yeah, it, was a, uh, it was a large crowd. It was a gentleman that was uh, a brawl that happened in the front of the business. Okay, a, a brawl. Do you know how the brawl started? It all started over a gold chain. Okay. From inside of Arena Bar and Grill. Did you witness how the brawl started? I didn't witness how the brawl started. After speaking with uh, different witnesses and stuff, once then we wound up finding out that it occurred inside Arena Bar and, I mean, Arena Bar and Grill, and they wound up spilling outside into the parking lot. Okay. Was it like, a, like somebody was trying to steal somebody's chain? I mean, it was like over 20 something people that was involved. Okay. Uh, and I guess one person got arrested for punching somebody, right? Correct. The, the primary officer who was over the scene, he wound up arresting, um, arresting someone. Okay. So, uh, simple battery, right? That's a misdemeanor? Yeah, simple battery is a misdemeanor. Doesn't mean he punched him. Could means he can simply just touch him, right? Because a battery is simply touching somebody, right? Yeah, if you, yeah technically, uh, just tapping somebody is a battery dissected and it could have been a stand your ground incident so that doesn't necessarily mean that there was criminal activity going on right yeah you, you can you can say that sir in fairness to you, you've been an officer for going on six years so you know exactly what i'm doing i'm dissecting these 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 cases that the city's using to claim that there's serious criminal activity going on there i understand exactly what you're doing okay so if i go down this every one of these I can check it off and saying that this isn't a place where serious criminal activity congregates because there's alternative theories, okay, and alternative defenses to each of these crimes because these people are still going through the justice system and they're entitled to a fair trial, correct? 
yeah, everyone is entitled to a fair trial. But if you continue to respond to the same location, the same business over a violent incident, I mean, it's always, or if you want to say misdemeanor incident, if, that, if that's how you want to put it, I mean, we're constantly going to the same business on midnight. It's like we're always going there. You guys have hot pockets in the city of North Miami, right? Like hot pocket areas. Every every every, every city, every city in Miami Dade County has hot pockets. Wonderful. How many petty thefts do you respond to? Those are those are misdemeanors. I can't I can't, I can't give you exactly a exact number of how many petty calls that I respond to. Do you respond to the cave at all? Since we were talking about the cave, I never respond. I, I, only time I respond to the cave is when, as far as any fire rescue for somebody who needs to stay vital check, but. The cave is a uh, uh, the cave is a uh, has ten times as much people that attend that nightclub, and we have zero issues out of them. And on top of that, too, you know, they request to have an off duty officer there as well. Okay, but but I'm just you know, and I think you're, you're in fairness to you, you understand what I'm trying to get at, which is mm -hmm. in 2018 there was two serious issues. Okay. Two serious attempted murders. Those are those are serious issues, right? Serious crimes. Correct. Uh, then there's shots fired in 2019, and it isn't until the news brings out an incident, which could have been a an alternative incident, which is an unfortunate accident, that the city of North Miami and your department, and I understand especially you, Officer Roach, decided to start harassing and target arenas for these violations and rescind their their business tax receipts. I never target or harass them. It's the difference when you get a call from a, uh, you get a call, anonymous call or a resident, and we respond to service. So if they, if somebody calls nine one one, I have to respond. That's my job. If they give an address, who I have to respond to, that's what I have to do. If my supervisor say, "Hey, Officer Roach, you have to go by this location," I have to do it. That's my job. So I'm not just targeting them. I'm not just picking on them. Every time I responded to that location. It had to be a call for service or something that my supervisor told, um, um, told me to do. So it was never, I never targeted them. So, so 911 is one way of getting you out there. The other way is your supervisor. So did your supervisors direct you to, to visit Arena? No, my supervisor never directed me as far as, but I'm just using the supervisor as a, as a reference as far as to um, if they tell me to do something, I have to do it. So if they tell me, hey, I have to drive past the business or anything like that, I have to do that. Like that's my job, which I'm going to do it anyway. But that's part of my job. Did Did your major ever tell you to direct uh, police resources and enforcement to the area of Arena uh, Grill and Lounge? I never spoke with the major directly. It, it gets filtered down. It's a chain of command from the from the major to the commander, from the commander to the sergeant, and the sergeant he comes to us, and the sergeant let us know as far as, hey, yeah, you have to go by this nightclub because of this is what's going on right now. So, did it try to the fire. so let me rephrase the question. Did it flow down from the top directing you to, to uh, put police resources and enforcement to that area? Yes, it comes from the top. Okay. And you know what, officer, I have no further questions of you. Thank you. Okay. Anything for further for Officer Roach? Yes. Um, Officer Roach, you testified um, that you were asked by your command staff to add additional police focus to this location? Yes, ma'am. Is it customary for that to occur at, a, at an establishment or a location where several violent crimes are occurring? Yes, ma'am. As uh, Major Carter spoke on it earlier, um, when you have uh, the intelligence and everything that's focusing on this club, because again, I'm a midnight officer. There's not too many businesses that's open. So the businesses that's open, we have to make sure we do our due diligence as far as going by these businesses and making sure that everything is okay to make sure as far as the, uh, uh, the patrons that attend a nightclub or whatever it may, case may be or a restaurant, make sure that they're safe and get home safe from out of our city. So I, yeah, of course. So when you so it would be routine in the police department strategy that if there was a location where several violent crimes are occurring, that there would be some additional focus to ensure safety in the community, and it wouldn't be for purposes of harassment. No, it wouldn't be purpose of harassment; just to be safety as far as in the community. 
And as a law enforcement officer, would you have to have probable cause of a violation of law or crime that had occurred in order to make an arrest? Yes, ma'am. Would you have to have evidence to base your arrest on? Yes. So is it fair to say that if it was just an, an alternative theory, an accident, it, since that's the term that was used, um, that that would be one of the things that the arresting officer would take into consideration, whether or not there was enough evidence to say that this was an accident or enough evidence to perhaps say that this is a crime, correct? Yes, ma'am. So in these particular instances, is it fair to say that because the arrest occurred, the police officer had enough evidence to say that this was not an accident, but in fact a crime? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to now share my screen with you, officer. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. You testified earlier that you do have access to police reports in your job role as a police officer at the North Bend Police Department, correct? Yes, ma'am. Does this look like a typical police report? Yes, ma'am. That's a typical police report. And what police report? What what location is described in this police report? That's the Arena Bar and Grill uh, address. That's there at one five five one Northwest one one nine. 119 Street. Okay. And then I'm going to scroll down. Is there a narrative? Yes, that's a narrative. That, yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's typical for you to document what you what has been seen or, or occurred by the officer and to document this in a police report. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and this police report is police report number 2021-35106, correct? Yes, ma'am. And more or less, um, if I were to scroll down, these are the police reports that I had asked you about earlier. Yes, ma'am. And just reviewing these, do these all look to be occurring at 1551 Northwest 119th Street? Yes, ma'am. And they all have narratives, they all document occurrences at this club, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you do have access to all these reports. Have I asked you on direct examination to testify about any of these specific reports or did I just ask you in general um, what your experience is based off of your recollection of um, reporting as a reporting officer, what your interactions were? What my interactions were with the, with the nightclub. Okay, but now that I've shown you the reports, do you recall that there are more or less at least 39 reports generated after the hours of 11 p.m. dealing with minor complaints that the, the business established in regards to operating after hours? Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Anything further, Mr. Arara? You know what? Uh, you know you don't have to. I do. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking because because there I can I can go off on the tangent about about probable cause and whether it meets the definition of a crime. But you know I, I think I've established that already that that probable cause doesn't necessarily mean that there's a crime committed. Actually, you know what? No, let me ask Officer Roach. Officer Roach. Got a question. How many cases have you had the state attorney uh, refuse to prosecute? How many cases? I can't tell you a number of cases over the years. I've been with the department over five years. Have you ever uh, had I've, I've Say it again? Have you ever had a case that the state attorney's office has refused to prosecute? You no, know, I've never been in that situation. As far as, you know, as far as what? As prosecute as far as what? As far as where you're you trying to go at? Trying to get at with it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, well, the, the inference that the city is trying to jump to is that the mere fact that an arrest has occurred, okay, and that you have PC to make an arrest means that a crime, okay. right? Because probably Correct. doesn't mean that a crime occurred, okay? It just means that you have some evidence to make an arrest. Correct. Rightfully or wrongfully, therefore, there could be a wrongful arrest, correct? Possibly, but at the same time, you have to understand when you're there on scene, or whatnot, and you speak to witnesses, uh, you have a victim that has injury, you have a subject right here, they describe the subject 
to his facial hair, to what he's wearing, to his uh, uh, his height, his weight, and he's right here on scene. I mean, you have enough evidence there to arrest that gentleman. But that's probable cause. That doesn't mean that a crime occurred because a, a crime essentially is once you you know you're you're arrested and you're charged and and they go forward and you're ultimately found guilty of that crime because a crime doesn't just because you arrest somebody doesn't mean a crime occurred. Okay, well, I mean, if we're going to put somebody in handcuffs, it all depends. Because you have uh, instantly to detain somebody, then we put you in handcuffs, you're being arrested. Okay, so you, you've never been accused of wrongfully arresting somebody, and I'm not... I, I've never been accused of wrongfully arresting nobody. But, but you, you, you are aware that officers regularly get accused of wrongfully arresting people, correct? Yeah, I'm aware, but I'm not those other officers. I'm Officer Rowe. I, I Listen, I'm not trying to impute your reputation. I'm trying to say that... that you, you've been brought here. The city's making this this leap that probable cause means that a crime occurred, okay? And I'm trying to get to the point that sometimes people get arrested and they've done nothing wrong, therefore a crime never occurred. I mean, you have some cases out there that's like that, but I just want to, like I said, before I speak for me. That's all I have for Officer Rhodes. Thank you, Officer. Be safe. All right. Thank you, Officer. Thank you. Um, city's next witness is uh, Crystal Patterson. Ms. Patterson, were you already sworn earlier? No. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to give in each proceeding shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please say, I do. I do. Thank you. And um, if I can get you to please state your name for the record. Crystal Patterson. And what is your job title with the city of North Miami? The director of co-compliance here with the city. And at, in your job role as um, director of co-compliance, are you familiar with the business establishment located at 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street? Uh, familiar just uh, in terms of uh, the violations in which have been issued, but I've never personally visited the establishment. Um, have you ever investigated and in, um, the business to see whether or not there was what type of business was occurring at the yes, location? I yes, I have. What type of research did you do to determine whether or not this was a nightclub versus a restaurant? I did an Instagram search, a social media search on the location and was able to ascertain some uh, club promotional videos and flyers. I'm going to now share my screen with you. Can you confirm that these are the um, the advertisements that you saw on the social media for Arena Lounge? Your Honor, can I get a proper foundation for these posts that uh, the city is showing uh, Ms. Patterson? That's what the city's trying to do, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah. Were, these, were these the advertisements that you saw on the social media page for Arena Lounge? So oh, I, they were not on the immediate page. They were tagged to the page. Okay, but you are familiar with these as advertisements that you um, located on the social media page. Yes. Um. And looking at the advertisements, what type of business did you um, feel was occurring at the business address? Based on the hours of operation and the services being rendered, for example, um, bottle service and what have you, um, it indicated that it was a nightclub or operating in the capacity of a nightclub. And did the advertisements indicate hours of operation past the hours of 11 p.m.? Yes, some of them did. And did they advertise um, any kind of entertainment occurring after the hours of 11 p.m.? I believe there were some hookah, um, some hookah advertisements, certainly bottle service and bottle prices advertised. Um, this was not, these 
that, I mean, this is what we have here, but it certainly wasn't limited to these flyers. So there were all sorts. I think I saw yacht parties and things of that nature. Nature, excuse me. Did you see anything as far as DJs, live music, that type of thing? Yes. Um, you also said that you were able to locate promotional videos. Yes, there were videos tagged to the page. Okay, I'm going to attempt to play the videos. Bear with me. And I'm going to object because I haven't seen these videos. They were never provided to me. I'll, I'll wait for your honor to rule on the objection before I share. Okay. Um, do you want a minute to review them, Mr. Um, Herrera? Are you able to go to a separate room to visit the um, review the videos? I don't know. If, I don't know if uh, I think it's up to. I don't have them. That's the problem. I don't even have them in my in my custody. They were never provided. Right. Okay, the city has them. I'm asking whether or not there is a way to go to a separate room to give Mr. Herrera an opportunity to review the videos. Um, I'll defer to the, the meeting host because it's not the our, my meeting. Is it possible, um, Deputy Attorney, for you to email it I can to email. the attorney? I can. Would you provide your email, Mr. Herrera? Jay T H E R R E R A at Herrera Law Firm dot com. I will be emailing you now. However, since I had technical difficulties, I am on another computer. So you'll be getting an email from a Veronique That's Malbrunch. How many videos are there? I was uh, only, I had several, but I'm only because of time purposes going to show two. So I've just sent the email. Let me know if you receive it, Mr. Herrera. It appears like it's coming in because it's taking its time, though. There it is. She's. I, I've just already, so you guys know I'm still here. I'm just sorry. giving Mr. Yeah. Herrera an opportunity to review. I've already viewed them, and I'll and I'll set out my specific objection to this. I, let Let me lay a specific objection after having seen these videos. Okay. Number one, there's no proper foundation or identification of where these videos were taken, where they even, even if they were even taken inside of any establishment. Number two, these videos could have been taken anywhere. Number three, nobody's brought in these individuals to say that even, even frequented this establishment. So this is just pure speculation. These videos could have been of anything. City responds and states that um, it's the testimony of code compliance.
Compliance Director Patterson that she personally viewed these videos on the public social media website for Arena Lounge and that she obtained them and that they were promotional videos posted by Arena Lounge in promotion for their business operations. But she wasn't personally there to watch these videos get recorded. The fact that I promote something on my social media page doesn't mean it's real. Trust me. Your Honor, the, the rules, uh, the strict rules of evidence don't apply in this proceeding, you know. Uh, you know How about the testimony? Go ahead. So, Ms. Patterson, I'm going to attempt to share my screen to, to show the video in which you described. And if you can just verify that um, these are the videos in which you are um, testifying to. Give me one second, Your Honor, because I'm working on someone else's um, computer. Are you guys able to see my screen? We're yeah. seeing your screen, but we're seeing the exhibit list. We're not seeing a video, or at least I'm not. Okay, I'm, here's the video. Do you see the video now? I don't see a video. No. Anyone else see a video? No. Right, stop sharing, try again. Do you see a video now? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna now play the video. Ms. Uh, Ms. Patterson, is this the video that you viewed when um, you went on the social media website? Yes, it did have audio though as well. Yeah, I seem to be having trouble with my audio, but was fortunate in that I was able to um, play it. Um, but as far as viewing it, this was the video that you um, located? Yes, it is. Um, does it show any kind of entertainment occurring at the establishment? It appears to. Okay. Um, is this the only video that you view? I don't believe so. I think there was another one or two. I'm going to attempt to share my screen again. And if you can confirm that the video I play is one that you located. Okay, um, ready to play the video. Uh, note that it probably will not have audio though. And uh, was this video one that you also viewed on the social media website for Arena Lounge? Yes, it is. Um, does it also display some type of entertainment at the nightclub? I would say so. Does it, does it show dancing? Does it show um, music occurring at the nightclub? Direction. Yes. Assisting. Is the video footage that you viewed uh, promoting the business operations, and in your opinion, did it appear to be promoting a restaurant use or a nightclub use? Same objection. Ask for opinion. 
I'll allow it. Yes, it does. Um, it appears to be um, a nightclub and not a, rest a standard restaurant establishment through the videos. And is it considered a code violation for a business to operate as a nightclub when they're only licensed as a restaurant in the city of North Miami? Objection. Speculation. She, she, she's drawing an opinion from a video that ha she hasn't authenticated that it actually occurred inside a rental bar and lounge or grill and lounge. Your Honor, I did not ask if, if there was a violation from the video. I asked in general whether or not it would be a violation of the code um, if they were to operate as a nightclub while only as a restaurant. Um, and she is the code compliance director. I would assume that she would have the best knowledge as to what code violations exist and don't exist, if that would be a, a style of a code violation. But you're deriving that opinion based on two videos that are that there is no absolute conclusive proof that they were filmed inside the, the location or established. I'm happy to lay the foundation better, Your Honor. Yes, please. Co-compliance Director Patterson, um, in your job role, are you familiar with um, different areas of the code? Yes, I am. And is it part of your job duties to um, advise your officers as to proper violations of the code? Yes, it is. So in your knowledge of the code and violations of the code, is it a code violation for a business to operate a nightclub while only being licensed as a restaurant? Without the proper uh, ex special exception permits, it would be, yes. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. However, I will reserve additional time for rebuttal if necessary. Um, I'm sorry, Cross. Good afternoon, Ms. Patterson. Hi, Mr. Attorney. Ms. Patterson, question. You are, I noticed, the interim co-compliance director, correct? Uh, that is incorrect. I have. I was the interim director. I am currently the director. So now you've, you're the official co-compliance director, correct? Yes, that's correct. What did you do before becoming the co-compliance director? I was the interim director. Before, I'm, I'm talking, well, I, I figured you got there because they took the interim off your title, but somehow I figured you, you, you were interim because you were within the city in some other capacity, correct? I served as the manager for the department as well. Um, I also served in a capacity of a code compliance officer, um, and I've been in regulations and enforcement for the last 14, 15 years. Okay, so you, you have a lot of knowledge. Reference the Instagram and Facebook information that that was provided by the city. Um, I noticed from what was provided to me, there's no indication when you went and got this information, uh, where exactly you got this information, uh, only just these screenshots that look uh, pre-printed. And I mean, I can share that with you. Uh, so my question is, were you the one that, that personally went out and, and pulled this information? Yes, I am. Okay, when did you do that? I don't have dates, um, but I do uh, believe it was certainly this year, um, perhaps around March or April. That's a funny time you did it. Why did you do it in March or April? Well, that's when we learned of the um, the potential um, issues that were happening at the location past 11 p.m., past outside of the scope of the um, certificate of use. Let me ask you a question. Was that around the time that the accident occurred? I, I couldn't, I don't know. March or April, there, there's, there, there's, a, there's an accident that occurred that was in the news with a white Lamborghini. Are you familiar with that accident? I'm familiar um, to some extent, but uh, because I'm not, uh, because I'm, the code department se operates separately from the police department, I don't necessarily keep current with dates and times. Who, who directed you to, uh, to engage in this inquiry on social media? Uh, it was a part of our investigation, the code compliance investigation. Who directed the investigation? Uh, we received uh, an incident report from the police department, I believe, that made us aware 
of, I think, several incident reports, if I'm not mistaken, that made us aware. Um, and so we began to research the location. And as a result, those, those videos were located. What's interesting about that is that there were incidences, and I'm, I'm sorry, but more serious incidences beforehand, and the city did nothing about it. It was only this incident, this March or April, when they directed you to do this, that made the news that you guys decided to take on enforcement. Do you, can, you, can you reconcile that for me? Uh, I'm not certain what you mean by we, uh, are you implying that we, that was our first time uh, enforcing the city's code against that location? Because that's not correct if that's the case. Well, ba based on, on the on the logic, and, and I've heard a lot of testimony today, and, and without, you know, obviously you're getting the, the back end of it today, and you've been here the whole hearing, uh, it seems that that's the logic that the city's trying to put forward. Uh, um, so help me out here. So with respect to code enforcement, um, I have a long list of um, violations for that location. Um, specific to enforcement regarding the licensure at that, whether it's that business or whoever was occupying the space, um, this would not be our first time citing that location for various issues, including licensure. Okay. Um, but this is the first time you actually went off on social media and you did an investigation, correct? That is correct. Now, you were shown a couple of videos. How do you know that those were actually filmed inside of the location? Um, I don't, but I can only assume since they were tagged to the page and they advertised, I believe the, the, the uh, captions, what have you were, I mean, we all use social media to some extent. So uh, the captions, the tags, all of that um, were associated with, with that business, which that specific business's page identifies their address and everything on the page. Okay. But, but I'm sure you know that, that there's some Instagram and Facebook media photographs and videos that are, uh, let's call them made up. They're, you know, people live larger on social media than they do in real life, right? You've, you've heard that statement, correct? Yes. Fair to say that you can't tell me for certain today, as we sit here today, that those two videos came from inside a random world and lounge. Um, I think that um, the videos have a very distinguished wall in the in, in behind both of those videos. And there's several police officers as well as code officers who have been inside that are on today's call, who I'm sure could attest to whether or not that wall exists inside the property. Again, I personally have never been inside the location. But I can I can regenerate that wall any which way I want. Go to a warehouse and film the same video and put it on Instagram and Facebook, correct? Yeah. So nobody nobody saw, and I'm sorry to describe it, a woman shaking herself and getting champagne thrown on her. Nobody here can testify to that, correct? I didn't see it in person, no. Saw it on a video, right? I saw it on a video. So the city has, and to your knowledge, the city has nobody that went into the into the bar and lounge and actually witnessed what's going on in these videos with their own eyes. It's possible, however, that wasn't the line of questioning for the other for the other witnesses. So I, I'm asking because you're the one that provided these videos, from what I understand. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the one that went out to social media, pulled out these flyers, and pulled down these videos. Okay, that the city's <laughs> using today. Right, but you said it is, is it true that nobody from the city, and when you didn't say me, so my answer is that it's possible that one of the other witnesses did, but that wasn't the line of questioning. I personally did not go inside the establishment, and I personally did not physically witness it, no. Those videos could have been taken anywhere, correct? Possible, per, perhaps, possibly, yes. By the way, do you do this level of investigation for, let's say, the cave? Anywhere that's anything that comes, my job is to enforce the code. So, so if you get a complaint, you automatically investigate, correct? Um, I don't investigate 
all complaints, but I do assist my my team in their investigations. Yes, commonly. Well, you 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 took this one on personally. It seems that way. It was assigned to you, correct? No, there are code officers um, that have yet to be called who were working on these cases. Let me ask you a question. In 2018, uh, you were in the code, I assume you were in the code compliance uh, division, right? Yes, I was. Okay. And uh, there were two incidences of attempted murder. Uh, did you investigate those uh, to see what was going on there? Um, we investigate any complaint um, that's received by the police department. Um, I'm looking in my system here. Uh, if we didn't receive the incident report communicated from the department, then um, that would be the only way we would know about it, is what I'm saying. And I don't believe that we received that report, so. Well, those two incidences must, must not have made the news. Because it's, it's ironic, and I'm sorry, and, and, I'm, and I'm sorry that, that a lot of you are in this position, but you know, this, this is what happens when, when the evidence shows and the numbers don't lie, that there's incidences from before, you're, you're using evidence that all these previous incidences don't matter. One incident makes the news, and all of a sudden I have targeted enforcement of this business. Can you reconcile that for me? Again, um, you, you, you continue to reference targeted enforcement, but again, I have violations dating 2020, 19, 18, all the way back to 2012 at this location for various issues. So um, remember, this, our, we don't deal with the criminal aspect of the, of the business. So, you know, um, I, I would disagree with you that this was targeted. Well, but when the issue was brought, when the issue, when the, when the concern was brought as to whether or not the business has um, licensure to operate after hours or beyond a restaurant was when this investigation started. So upon learning of after hour operations, we began the began an appropriate investigation in my opinion. It only took you three years to do because they've been operating since 2018. So my question is, did the city know about it in 2018? I didn't know anything about it. So for three years, a city of North Miami, which can't be that big, based on what everybody's testified to so far, nobody knew that this business was operating for three years up until the March incident. Um, so I think I heard earlier the major attest to this. Um, our city does not commonly have clubs. Um, we are, the code department does not operate beyond normal business hours. Um, we recently, and I think the reference to another club in our city has only been brought up because that's, I believe, the only club that we currently have that is an approved and permitted club. So it is highly likely that we would not have known about that location because, again, we don't operate beyond business hours because the scope and the demographic within our city didn't call for it. Do other co-compliance departments operate beyond five o'clock? Yeah, sure. And so is it fair to say that the co-compliance officers that report to you, is that, is that a correct statement? I'm sorry, I want to make sure I got, got it right. The co-compliance co officers report to you, correct? Because you're the, the, the boss. That is correct. Okay. Is it fair to say that these co-compliance officers that issued these citations never independently witnessed any of this, the operations after 11 p.m.? Our code, uh, no, they never physically witnessed. So these, the, 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 the violations cited were cited as a, um, as uh, in response to police, sworn police officers who um, prepared incident reports, who are also designees of our city manager and our code. So that's how those violations came into existence. So the veracity of the statements in the police reports are, are what they are, and your co-compliance officers just simply relied on them to issue these citations. That is correct. So they don't have independent first-hand knowledge of any of these operations after 11 p.m. That is correct. And, and I'm sorry, with, with due respect, neither do you, correct? 
I'm sorry? Neither do you, correct? I physically have not been there after 11 p.m., no. Uh, have you ever revoked a license from a business or issued citations to a business for being uh, what they call congregational grounds for crime? I'm not shorthanded. I have not. And I know you're not a law enforcement officer, but you you know we can assume that you do a lot of work with law enforcement because they work after 5 p.m., correct? Yes. Um, in your mind, in your opinion, merely because somebody is arrested, does that mean that they committed a crime? I prefer not to answer that question. That's beyond my scope. My opinion doesn't matter. Well, you're, you're the co-compliance officer, correct? We didn't cite any criminal activity, nor do we. Well, you just told me you relied on arrest affidavits to issue these citations. Right, but we cited for noise nuisances and licensure things that are uh, things that are that are uh, within the scope of what we do here in code enforcement. Nothing related to any criminal activities discussed today. But you you also testified earlier that your inquiry in March or, in, or April was directed by the police department because there was an incident that occurred at Arena Mount Grill. No, the, in, the inquiry was in reference to operations beyond 11 o'clock outside of the scope of the certificate of use. So, you don't have an opinion one way or another? No opinion, sir. You're, so, and I think I talked to Mr. Cook, it seems a, a, a lifetime ago about um, the definitions of restaurant, bar, and lounge in your code. You recall that line of questioning? Because I know you were present. I don't know if you were, you were listening to my, my going back and forth. Yes, I was, I was listening. Would your code compliance officers issue citations for a business that, for a restaurant that was, had food and, and liquor after 11 p.m., okay? and may have had an incidental uh, guitar player or musician playing for entertaining its guests. Would they, can, I don't, can you repeat the question? Would, if a restaurant, a pure restaurant that serves food and liquor, okay, after 11 p.m., had a guitarist, right, uh, flamenco, right, and they were, had the flamenco and they had the food and, and, and the liquor going, would that call your attention? Would you cite them for operating a nightclub without the proper licensing? 311 p.m. Correct. Yes. So, so is it fair to say that any restaurant that operates after 11 p.m. should be concerned in the city of North Miami? Any restaurant that operates after 11 p.m. should acquire a special exception permit. But my question is, do you go around checking every business at 11 p.m. to make sure they're closed if they're a restaurant? We, we don't operate at 11 p.m., so we rely on, on sworn, our sworn police department, the officers within the sworn, the sworn police officers within the police department um, for those types of inspections and investigations. Okay, because it seems like at 11 p.m., the city of North Miami turns into a sleepy little town because the restaurants are supposed to shut down by 11 p.m. If, we take everything that we've heard today on its face. So that's my question is, do your, your co-compliance officers normally get complaints about restaurants open past 11 p.m.? Often. Okay. How many restaurants in the city, if you know, because you're the co-compliance officer, how many restaurants in the city serve food and alcohol? Um, that's not something that I would know. I don't issue zoning certificates or certificates of use. That's a question for the zoning department. We just enforce the code here. So you've never had a complaint of a restaurant that serves alcohol. Uh, we never had any complaints about those establishments, correct? I can't say what we've ever had, um, but nothing com that comes to mind. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing further. Thank you.
nothing further from the city either, Your Honor. No redirect? I'm sorry. Um, no redirect. The city um, would just call its last witness. Okay. Officer um, Sanders. Good afternoon, Ms. Sanders. Um, did you already get sworn in earlier? Yeah, she was sworn in as part of the um, court enforcement group. Perfect. Um, can you please state your name for the record? Shanna Sanders. And what is your current position with the City of North Miami? I'm the lead co-compliance officer for the City of North Miami. And what are your job duties as lead co-compliance officer? I enforce and educate the residents and businesses on the city's ordinances. And are you familiar with the business located at 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street? I am familiar enough with it through the police reports that or incident reports that have been given to me. And have you issued any tickets or citations to the business? Yes, I have. And do you typically issue citations or tickets for violation of city code? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you. Can you verify that this is a um, citation issued by the co-compliance department? Yes, it is. And can you confirm that this citation, citation number 154128 was issued by you? Yes, it was. And this was issued to Arena Grill and Lounge? Yes. And this in the location of the violation was 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street? That's correct. And what was the code violation for which you issued this particular citation? Um, the section was 295-904-G, which states that they were fair you to obtain the required special exception permit for the, um, operating up for a business, for a club. And so is it considered a violation of 29-5-904 to operate a nightclub without first obtaining a special exception permit? That's correct. And on or about April 27th of 2021, did you issue one four, um, citation number 14129? Yes, I did. And this was also issued to Arena Lounge located at 154751. Northwest 119th Street? Yes, it is. And was this for another violation of a code? Yes. What code violation was this for? Chapter 29, which was asked them to cease and desist operating their business outside um, the scope of what their certificate of use was issued for. And is it considered a violation of Chapter 12 for the um, business to continue operations um, past the hours of 11 p.m. while only approved as a restaurant use. That's correct. And Officer Sanders, on or about April 27th of 2021, did you issue citation number 14130 to Arena Lounge located at 154751 Northwest 119th Street? Well, this one um, is not actually for Arena Lounge. This is actually for the actual plaza that it was issued for. They didn't have a business tax receipt for the entire plaza. Got you. And would this be a, considered a code violation at that property address? <laughs> That's correct. And on or about April 27th of 2021, did you issue citation number 14131? Um, to that location again at um, 1551 Northwest 119th Street. Yes, yes, I did. Sorry, objection. The, the, these last two citations are outside the scope of the four corners of the, of the citation today and the, uh, the notice today. Your Honor, the purpose of this morning's hearing is for revocation of the license for the business licensed at the address of 1547-1551 Northwest 119th Street. One of the bases um, for revocation would be violation of city codes or laws at that address. And that's what the city's attempting to establish here. 
and respect okay. for, in response the the persons that are named in these last two were not noticed today okay what is the relevance for um, admitting the other two that were not for the um, arena restaurant for but for gomo is it gomo or gmo uh, I think it's Gumo Corporation, and if I'm not, I'll defer to the code clerk. I believe that they were noticed of this morning's hearing. I believe they also had some cases for this morning's hearing. They should be on the call. Um, but, you know, you know, what the basis that the city's looking to admit it for is to show that there are um, violations of city codes occurring at that property address. And, 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 are you and that they do relate to the operation of the business um, unlawfully as a nightclub as opposed to a restaurant. And those and, and Gumo, Gumo Corporation is outside the control of arenas. So I don't know how that imputes in any way, shape or form to arenas. Those are separate corporate entities. Are the two related? They're not. No, I'm asking the city attorney. Um, they're related because of the violation of the business. What has happened here is the business, the, the property owner has now come under code violations because the business owner, Arena Lounge, has violated the city's code. So the city's establishing that the business is committing violations of the city's code, thereby, thereby generating citations not only in their name, but as well as the property owner. Judge, I, I, or I'm sorry, Your Honor, I understand that the city's taking the position that this is a quasi-judicial proceeding and anything kind of goes, but, you know, we still need to adhere to the spirit of the law. The city's so, fine, you know, for argument's sake to just um, defer to the two citations that were issued in the name of Arena Lounge. I believe that they are for the same um, code violations. The, the substance of the testimony is really just to establish that um, the business has committed violations of city code, which um, is um, what the city's trying to establish for revocation of the business tax receipt. Okay, so in that case, the objection is sustained as it relates to the citations against GOMO. Go, is it is either GOMO or GMO, I'm not really sure, corporation. Okay, Officer Sanders, in regards to the citations that were issued to Arena Lounge, were those, those were considered code violations of the city's code, correct? That's correct. Uh, specifically, some of these were also for zoning code violations, correct? That's correct. No further questions, Your Honor, of this witness. However, I would reserve some time for rebuttal if needed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sanders, how are you? I'm pretty good on yourself. I'm doing fantastic. Officer Sanders, I um I noticed on these uh these two citations that you issued to Arena and Unlimited Maza, uh that it says the time issued and it doesn't say AM or PM. Can you clarify what time you issued these citations? Um, can you put the tickets back up? Um, sure. I I don't know. Attorney. If I, yeah, let me. See I believe it was PM, but let's let's confirm if we can put the tickets up. One second. PM. Yeah. Okay. And on the second and on the second one, I also see that it says 225 p.m. Okay. So is it a fair assumption that you never witnessed this business open beyond 11 p.m.? That's correct. OK. And what documents or what information did you rely upon to issue these citations if you didn't witness it personally? I received police reports or incident reports from the police department regarding business or operations being ran outside or um, extending past the hours of what their certificate of use was stating. So again, it was the incident reports. Do you normally look at every single police report from the night before to issue citations? I, I usually look over the incident reports that come to the city, yes, that comes to our department. So, so you get into work at 9 a.m. or whatever time you guys start in the city, and the first thing you do is you look at every single police report to issue code citations? No, I look at the incident reports that come that are forwarded to me. So they're, there's directed, they're directed to you to say, hey, direct enforcement to this business, correct? Not just this business, any business in a residence. Okay. 
So have you ever been instructed to issue code citations to uh, businesses by the police? I've been given incident reports from the police department and asked if code could follow up to investigate further to see what is going on in reference to code violations. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, these came in April, correct? I'm not sure if it was March, April or May. It was earlier this year. I I'll agree that the, that the two citations say 427 2021 so that would be april of this year do you recall what police report you received to start this investigation i don't recall the exact ones it's been several as we have all have been hearing over the testimony that's been given i have received numerous reports okay but these these two in particular they were issued in april it's a very curious time since you mentioned that you've been hearing everything that's been going on, it's a very curious time to issue these. Do you recall if it was given to you pursuant to an accident that occurred? I don't know anything about any accidents. Okay. So, uh, and again, I'm sorry to, to harp on it. So what police report did you rely upon to come up with these violations? Again, it was, it's been numerous ones. I, I can't give a specific one or two, it's been numerous incident reports. Nothing that depicted any accidents or anything. It was about a violation of a business being ran outside of the scope of what their certificate of use stated. Okay, now, uh, I'm just, uh, so, so it's no report. I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out here because if you didn't personally witness it, okay, somebody had to have given you something that you relied upon, whether it be a sworn statement, something that you could say, this is an accurate statement. I'm going to go investigate it. I'm trying to figure out where, what that was. It was a police, it was a police incident report. Okay. So did you look into the police incident report? Did you read it over to determine what happened there before you jumped to investigate and issue a citation? Yes, I did. Okay. What independent steps did you take to investigate? Merely looking at the police report stating that a business was being ran after 11 p.m. And based and that's simply based on a statement of an officer, but you never personally witnessed that business being run, correct? No, I went by what the incident report stated. Okay, so the officer could be wrong. I went by what the incident report stated from a sworn officer. No, I, I listen. I understand. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. You, whatever the officer put in that report is what you relied upon. That's correct. Okay. So whether whether it's right or wrong, you don't independently verify the facts within the police report or the report or the incident report given to you by the officer. You simply say. This, it looks like the officer said it, it, it was operating after 11 p.m., so I'm just going to issue the citation. Is that a fair analysis? I would say, as our director stated in her previous comments, we rely. We're not here past a certain hour of the night, so we rely on the police department to provide us with that information through incident reports. Have you visited the location personally? when posting the property for the tickets is when I visited the property. Okay. And is this the only bar, lounge, or club that you've ever had an issue with in North Miami? I would say yes at this present time, yes. Okay. Do you issue a lot of uh, code complaints in the city of North Miami? Over the years, I have. Okay. Um, and in issuing your code, your code complaints, what information do you rely upon? What, and besides, and we've already established how you get the information beyond five, but what other documents or resources do you use to determine a violation occurred? We rely upon our invest our, our investigative skills in going out inspecting a property, we would visit it ourselves. If we don't have a incident report, as we did in this incident, we would go out and inspect the property ourselves. Okay. Uh, 
when you issued this, did you look at the city code to determine the difference between a restaurant, a bar, and a lounge, and what licensure this business had? No, I did not. So how did you jump to the conclusion that this was a restaurant operating as a nightclub? I, I would be honest enough to say I had a conversation with our director and we spoke about what the ordinance states, not so much about the difference of what a restaurant in or what a restaurant or a nightclub is. It's about that they were operating outside the scope of what the certificate of use was for. But, so how did you derive from the police report what was going on inside the premises to reach the factual and legal conclusion that they were in violation? Because the business tax receipt in or certificate of use states that they should be closed by 11 o'clock. The incident report stated that it was incidents happening with 11 o'clock, 1130, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 130, 2 o'clock in the morning. But again, you don't know what was going on inside is what I'm trying to get at. No, I do not know what was going on inside. So it could have been a restaurant operating past 11 p.m. It could have been. And, that's, and restaurants operating after 11 p.m. are in a violation of the city's code. Not necessarily. Again, I think as Derek Cook stated, different restaurants open at different times that have approval through their certificate of use. Well, if we take Mr. Cook's word, it's any fast food restaurant. So you can't have fancy restaurants operating after 11 p.m. in North Miami. That's, that, that's what I'm asking. Do you have any knowledge, and I think you've established it, of what was going on inside this, this establishment? I went by what the incident report stated. Okay. Did it say anywhere that it was a club or a lounge? I can't be positive, but I believe it said that it was a... It was activity going on in the late night hours or the early morning hours after for which the business should have been closed. Nothing further. Anything for this witness? Any redirect? Or no. No. Okay. Um, Officer Sanders, um, is it usual and customary for code officers to rely on sworn police reports and issuing citations? Very often, yes. And is it often, um, or it, does the role of the police department to investigate civil violations or criminal violations? I I'm on, I believe they handle criminal activity. So is it usual and customary when a police officer sees a possible civil violation in association with the crime that they may pass those reports on um, for further investigation of any kind of civil or code violations? Yes, they do. Um, no further questions, Your Honor, this witness. All right. What's next? Or who's next? Uh, the city rest. We have no more witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Herrera? Your Honor, I have no witnesses. And at this point, considering it's the city's burden to carry, I think these citations should be dismissed. Your Honor, we're not here for, um, we're not here to hear citations. We're here to establish that um, under Section 11-29 of the city's code, that the business tax receipt for this um, establishment should be revoked. Um, as, as the city stated in its opening, um, there were three basis that, that, that it can be revoked for. The city does feel that it has provided sufficient evidence and testimony for all three um, basis, but for any of them, it can be revoked, with the first being that the taxpayer is conducting a business which is not in compliance with city code and zoning laws um, by conducting a nightclub use on the premises while only licensed as a restaurant. Um, the second basis that the taxpayer obtained their business tax receipt and certificate of use by providing misleading and or deceptive information and by making false statements in their applications stating that the proposed use was for a restaurant, and these statements were relied upon by city employees in issuing their permits and certificates. 
Um, and then the last basis that the city feels that it's proved is that um, in the opinion of the police department, that the premises has been used as well as the public area surrounding the premises as a meeting place or hangout for patrons engaged in illegal activity so as to create a detriment to the health, safety, morals, and welfare of the community. So the city would, would, would say that for any of those three reasons, that the business tax receipt should be revoked. But we do feel that um, we provided sufficient evidence for all three. However, um, for any one of those, the, 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 the magistrate does have grounds for revocation of the business tax receipt. And, and if I may respond. <laughs> The false statements are, is they haven't shown enough evidence to establish that a false statement was made. I think you heard enough testimony to state that in these application packages, they do not provide the definition of what a restaurant, bar and lounge, or a nightclub are to these individuals. Therefore, their signature on that document does not necessarily impute that they made a false statement or intentionally tried to deceive the city of North Miami. And they haven't provided a single iota of evidence to suggest that when they signed these applications and they provided these applications to the city, they knew that they were making a false statement or deceiving the city of North Miami. Second of all, as to the criminal activity, I think we've already established that merely an arrest does not and is not conclusive of criminal activity or crime being committed. In fact, we can, we can spin alternative theories and there are alternative hypotheses as to what occurred. For instance, a tragic accident, a mistake, somebody touched somebody and there was a battery arrest. The fact is that the city has not established that a Reno lounge and grill is a meeting place or a congregational place for criminal activity. Moreover, simply by showing a video of a woman shaking her and champagne being poured on her that could be recorded anywhere, okay, does not establish the activity that is going on inside that establishment. They have not produced an iota of evidence to conclusively show what is going on inside that establishment, okay? It could be false advertisement. They have, they have to show exactly what is going on. And I understand that this is a loose standard because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding. But we should hold, when you're going to take away somebody's right to conduct business, we should hold the city to a higher standard. The city should provide the evidence of what exactly is going on in the city. The city co-compliance officers can, can testify to that because they don't work past 5 p.m. The officers certainly don't know what's going on inside because none of them have testified as to ever seeing what was going on inside. The only thing they respond to is external and outside crime, which can happen anywhere. We don't know if these criminals came specifically for what business they were there. Thus, the entire proposition that the city has been trying to put forward to revoke their business tax license is all based on supposition. There's no hard evidence of what was actually going on inside of this club at the time that these, these incidences occurred. And for that reason, I don't think my client's business tax license or certificate of use should be revoked at all for the lack of evidence that the city's put forward. I have a few questions. Um, do you think that the applicants, the owners, hold any responsibility to do their due diligence to know um, what they're assigning? And if they're going to open a restaurant to know the difference between a restaurant and a nightclub? If they're going to do business in a city? I think, I think that that's debatable. And, and, I, and I, it's debatable because the definition of a restaurant, bar, and lounge varies between some cities. 
if they're going to open a, a business in a particular city, do they bear any responsibility to know what the rules, what the, the codes, what, what um, for that particular city where they intend to open the, um, the business? I think it's tangential. I think this, when the city gives an application, they should give the information defining what designation they're applying for. And, and so, so, so I think it's tangential. I think to answer your question with, with honesty and integrity and, and not to compromise, professionally, there, there is some, but the city at the same time should provide the definition of what they're applying for. And, that, and I know that that occurs in some cities with application packages, and I'm not a novice to seeing these application packages. So, so I, think, I think harmless error, if, if, if we're going to a false statement or an intentional false statement, I think it falls on a harmless error. Um, and I guess my other question is, is this as well. At what point did the owners realize or learn that what they're doing is borderline in violation of the city code and for them to adjust their practice accordingly? Because I'm, I'm trying to understand how this gets this far. And if the, if, if the violation is that you cannot operate after 11 p.m., right? You cannot have entertainment after 11 p.m., why, why wasn't there a switch Okay, this is what we intend to do. We intend to have entertainment, um, so we need to reapply for the proper, um, the, the you know, the proper certificate of use. How about we stop whatever it is that that's you know that's upsetting the city? Let's stop it while we apply. Why do we continue the same behavior to the point where this is here now? So to answer the question with complete candor and trying not to violate my attorney-client privilege and discussions I've had with the city, um, I can answer it this way. I'm trying to correct that. And unfortunately, this all was scheduled while I was scheduled to be out of town. So I'm back in the office and I'm trying to correct it. And I, I, I've taken the proper steps to bring this business into compliance, to be a good neighbor for the city of North Miami. And I can say that without violating any confidences and any conversations I've had with the city of North Miami. Okay. Let me ask questions of the city attorney. Um, what, short of a um, revocation, what other remedies that we have that can be discussed here today that says, um, Arena, is that the name? What is Arena. the name? Arena Hall. This is what we want. This is what you have to do to rectify the violation so that we're not, we don't just revoke your license. Um, so with complete candor, Your Honor, um, and, and also listening to the testimony of Derek Cook, um, Arena Lounge has for a long time been told by the city and, and, you know, given the guidance that they needed to, um, I believe it was uh, Derek Cook's testimony that he actually gave them the packet and gave them um, all of the information that they needed to gain their special exception permit. I believe he also said a variance was needed and that never happened. Um, I will say that in May, um, the city attorney did have discussions with council for Arena Lounge and at that time, the city did ask, um, we, we obeyed any enforcement action. We did not proceed with revocation of the business tax receipt. We said, we will give you some time to gain that appropriate licensure for your client. And I believe the deal was that Arena Lounge was going to stop operations after 11 p.m. until they came into compliance. And so the city was okay with that to a certain point. However, that was in May. Um, since May, it is, you know, our understanding that not only have they continued operations after 11 p.m., um, they have been quite insulting to the responding officers on scene. 
uh, basically saying they have every right to be uh, operating after 11 p.m. and that they don't need to come into any kind of compliance. Um, so the reason this was the scheduled for hearing today, this is really um, the, the city's last resort. This is the only way um, that the city will be able to ensure proper compliance and make sure that the business um, stops operations until they obtain the appropriate licensure. All right. I have been um, listening to the testimony presented. I've been taking notes, um, starting with um, the witness, Mr. Padron. Um, who testified in terms of what's usual and customary when an applicant comes to apply for, um, to obtain a license and what the, um, the city relied on to issue um, a license and the application that was signed by the owners at the time indicated that they were it would be used for a restaurant and um i guess liquor license and so based on that um attestation by the applicants that's how it was um issued the um, certificate of use i also listened to the testimony given by officer cook um, is, is Cook an officer? I'm sorry. Derek Cook. I don't think he's a manager. <laughs> the zoning manager. I'm sorry. I don't know why I put officer next to his name. Um, <clears throat> that gives the testified as, as to the difference between obtaining a license for a restaurant as opposed to a nightclub and what that entails and um, obviously to obtain a nightclub license um, here are some some exceptions and there are certain process that you have to go through um, one of which requires um, special review by a board um, also requires um, hearing where residents and the public is given an opportunity to be heard. Um, and there is, I believe, what they call a distance separation, that there has to be certain, I guess, feet from schools, residences, religious institutions, and I um, can't remember, I think parks, he said. Um, so there needs to be a, a certain approval and a process to obtain a license for a nightclub. Um, he indicated that he met with the owner at the time and um, spent a significant amount of time trying to explain to them what the process entails and explaining what the difference is um, between a restaurant and a nightclub. And um, gave some examples in terms of other restaurants that stay open past 11, such as Ennies that don't serve alcohol or a McDonald's that doesn't um, require or allow um, any of the um, um, patrons inside the um, actual restaurant. I also, Listen to the testimony from the major, um, as well as Officer Roach, who have um, personal experience with the particular location, um, testified in terms of the um, incidents, numerous incidents inside that particular location. Um, and um, making arrests for um, 
different incidents. And I think that the testimony is that over 40 plus incidents over a period of time, including um, a particular staff that was ran over, um, I guess by a one of the one of the um, attendees, as well as um, security guards being attacked as recently as I think that was in July. That was in July. Well, that was this month. We're still in July. Um, a fight between an intoxicated person with a security guard at that location. Um, another incident in June that involved a, um, victims being struck while sitting in their cars outside the, um, the arena. Um, I know that council during his cross um, alluded to uh, a couple of incidents, attempted murders between the um, 2018 and 2019 and aggravated batteries and, and shootings that happened at the restaurant, um, which I'm assuming in, in his opinion, um, mean that the city was aware that the restaurant was operating as a nightclub, but never enforced its code. Um, I don't, I don't know if this is um, particularly an excuse or a waiver of the city's authority to enforce its code if it's in violation. I think that that it city has the authority to enforce its code at any time. Um, I don't think that if they knew prior to 2021 or prior to the incident where um, the staff was run over by a Lamborghini and it made the news, I don't know if that it necessarily waived the city's ability or authority to, um, to enforce its code. As for the um, as for the videos, I agree with counsel. Um, I don't think that I had sufficient evidence um, presented to me to prove that these were taken inside the um, location. Um, and it's true with technology now, people can you know, they can do whatever they want with, with a picture. So I'm not weighing my um, my decision solely on the videos. As for the flyers that were posted on the business's um, social media, um, I definitely put weight on that because if there's no association, then it shouldn't, then it shouldn't even be on your page. Um, I think that if it's on your page and it's being advertised and the hours of the advertisement falls well beyond the 11 p.m. Um, cutoff, then and you continue to advertise it over and over. Um, there were several flyers um, showing that these are activities that are being at least sponsored by this um, establishment, then I have to take that into consideration that they are promoting it. It's on their um, in, on social media page. Based on the testimony and evidence presented, um, it's very unfortunate that the business owner did not take this 
as seriously probably as they should to pivot and change course once they realized that they were in violation, once they realized that, um, you know, there's a possibility that they can lose their license. Um, I think that they were given an opportunity to stop, um, to stop the behavior to um, at least until such time that they're able to obtain the proper license, they should have just revert back to operation from, you know, whatever time until 11 p.m. Stop with the entertainment aspect of the, um, you know, uh, of the entertainment aspect of, you know, having um, entertainers after hours, having, you know, people at the establishment after a certain hours, while council is working with the city, trying to get them um, the special, uh, whatever special provision that they need um, or special exception approval that they need to operate as a, as a nightclub. I think that had they done this, had they cooperate and at least follow um, council's advice, I don't think that this case would have reached me. It would not have been here today. But since they completely, um, based on, on the evidence presented, disregarded you know, the, the basic thing of what they needed to do to allow council to get the proper license um, so that they can operate at the, as the nightclub. And it seems like this is their goal. This is what they want to do to be able to operate after hours, have entertainment, um, alcohol and, and what have you. So um, for that reason and for the reasons listed and based on the evidence and testimony presented, I do find that they are in violation of city code. And I do um, find that it rises to the level of um, a revocation of their business tax receipts. Um, and um, that's that's my ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. Is that everything for today? I'll, I'll defer to the code enforcement clerk. I believe I saw some messages in the chat that the code cases had been deferred to August. Am I correct? Uh, only the cases that were in Zoom, but we still have cases for Gumo properties, including uh, one ticket appeal for them. Would you like for me to call all of the nuisance cases into record all at once? Yes, please. Okay. Um, all of the cases are for Gumo Corporation for the property of 1529 Northwest 119th Street, case CENUS 2021-00179, case CENUS 2021-00180, case CENUS 2021-00181, Case CENUS 2021-00184, Case CENUS 2021-00214, Case CENUS 2021-00215, Case CENUS 2021-00217, Case CENUS 2021-00227, Case CENUS 2021-00229, KCENUS 2021-00230, Case CENUS 2021-00231, Case CENUS 2021-00232, Case CENUS 2021-00236, and Case CENUS 2021-00238. All of these cases belong to Officer Aaron Barber. Permission to discipline inquiry. Um, Mr. Herrera, do you also represent Gumo Corporation, the property owner, or just Arena Lounge? No, I only represent Arena Lounge. Is anybody here for Gumo Corporation? So I believe that these were the notices of violation were issued to the property owner because they are code violations, no? Yes. Hello, do we have anyone that registered for this? No. Okay, so no, Deputy Attorney, we don't do not have anybody here on behalf of the property. But, but uh, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say, so these violations, um, if, sorry, these violations, I um, believe were, um, they are issued against the property owner um, on behalf of the business owner. Is that? What I need to know is, you know, were they given proper notice yes. to appear or are these appeals? What, what, what is this about? These are their general notice of violations, um, okay. special magistrate, and I'm happy to um, share, uh, present the um, notice that was given. I'm um, not sure. Do you? I'm gonna just, I guess, first case. Aaron, you wanna give provide the magistrate with your testimony reference notice. No audio airing. Special Magistrate, it does look like though that notice to appear was issued, was provided to Kuomo Corporation, um, sent certified mail, the affidavit of posting, um, property was posted for today's hearing. Um, and 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 censored by now. Okay, so the citations based on the evidence presented regarding notice, I find there's proper notice and I find that given proper notice, the owners have failed to appear. So these were civil violation tickets, correct? No, ma'am, these were notices of violation. Um, these were standard notices of violation issued. And this is re still in reference to the um, the operation. Okay, operating after eleven. So bear, bearing in mind, magistrate, that the um, the violation goes with the property owner. the The arena lounge is simply an occupant of the space, and so the the, the property owner was cited for. Um, all of the subsequent violations. Understood. So this, what are this one is for nuisance. What's, what's the next one? They're all um, you, they're all the same. The difference is are they're all um, attached to separate incident reports, but all the same violation, just um, attached to the various incident reports received by the police department. So I think, Madam Attorney, these would basically find the property owner in violation as well. Correct. The, the, these, um, the city would be proceeding against the property owner for the, the violations of the tenant, the business owner. Okay. And so these are for individual incidents because I see May, what is it, May 3rd, May 4th, May 7th. Right. So based on the same testimony we heard earlier, these are just basically all of the various code cases that were attached to the incident reports. To the North Miami Police Department incident reports. Okay. And the city is seeking what? An adjudication against the property owner? The corporation? Uh, yes. Yes, Special Magistrate. That would be the um, city's request at this time. Based on the evidence presented, um, 
or unrebutted present um testimony presented and given the proper notice the owners have felt to appear hereby find in favor of the city and turn adjudication as to each violation um do we get an abatement date considering that um we're about to to process a revocation of the um of the business i think we can because at this point um it'll be up to the the tenant to shut down they do not shut down and the city has to take further um action then the property owner will be held liable for the continued violation Mr. Herrera, since I still have you here, um, how long do you think that the process is going to take for your client, sir? Well, let me let me give it some deep thought because I'm I, and unfortunately, I think North Miami moves pretty fast. I figure I can get it done in the next sixty to ninety days, I, and I don't know what what speed the city moves at once I submit an application. Okay, so I can do an adjudication and then I can do 60 days. Um, and if the, um, if the violations are not abated by the, um, what is the, what is it within 60 days? Um, S September 14th would be the abatement date for the September 21 hearing. Okay. So September 14th would be the abatement date. Do the violations specify in terms of a um, an amount? I don't wanna go above that. Does each violation state an amount, Officer Barber? No, no, there's no amount. These weren't tickets, Magistrate. These were um, notices of violation. Okay. I know. We keep saying that, right? And I keep going back to civil violence. Uh, okay. Citations. All right. If the, um, if the violations are not resolved by the abatement date, that will be a daily fine amount. This is a, a, a major case. Um, so I'll put it at $1,000. And since I'm and since I'm here, can can I just ask a question, just just to make sure I'm clear? Because obviously this is I'm trying to resolve it from the tenant and the landlord. In some ways, is involved, correct? Implicated, I guess. Yeah, I guess you can call it. <laughs> yeah, implicated. Yeah. As long as I and I want to make sure, as long as I take care of this by September 14th, the city's not going to impose a fine against the landlord, correct? That's correct. Uh, yes, that's the abatement date, correct. And, and just to add, theoretically, there really shouldn't be any more because now that the business tax receipt has been revoked, the business is shut down. The police will come out and enforce that. So there really shouldn't be any continued operations past that date. The city's only asked for an abatement date to ensure that there's no more activity. It, it should be understood by the business owner that as of today, operations as a restaurant or a nightclub have to cease until proper licensure is obtained because at this point they have no licensure with the city. And that's and that's fine. It makes it makes my job a little bit easier because I can just apply for a whole new business license. Okay. Do we have any other business for this particular um, location for this particular? Um, I guess. Um, business so that we can allow Mr. Herrera to log off. Log we have off. a ticket that was appealed by um, Gumo Corporation, which is CTMIS 2021-00023. Uh, the property address was 1547 through 1551 Northwest 119 Street. Uh, this is Shanna Sanders' case. Yeah, but Pilar, there, nobody showed up on behalf of the appeal, right? So we can't right. have an appeal. So yes, but sure there has you know. to be a ruling. The city would say that proper notice was given for this morning's hearing and due to the failure of the property owner to appear that their appeal should be um, withdrawn and the citation sustained as, as written. 
Thank Granted. You. So that we will concludes for Guomo. That concludes for Guomo and our reading language for today's for today's agenda, uh, Mr. Attorney. So am I am I free to leave? Yes, Mr. Herrera. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you and your client. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Next case. There's someone by the name of Gladys Abreu. I believe she's here for case 11 and 12, which is Roberto Abreu. I'm going to give her access to speak and join us. Gladys, let us know once your uh, video and audio is enabled, please. Gladys, are you there? Um, Gladys, are you there? All right, it looks like we don't have anyone here. Okay. She, I see her, I see her, yeah. but. Yeah, the name is there, but um, we don't have anyone responsive. I just okay. promoted it, yeah. All right, well, we're not, she's been waiting for quite some time, so give her a minute. Gladys, I see your hand. I see her raising her hand. Oh, she raised her hand? Uh, are you able to speak? Because your audio is enabled, Gladys. You have to have audio and video in order to participate in today's hearing. Yeah, she doesn't show, her system doesn't show video. It shows audio, but she's not speaking, so I don't know. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how to put the video. I was um, trying to get everything here, but probably lower hand, pin, no. Okay, the most important thing that you can hear me. Start we want to be able to see you if possible. Do you see the little um, camera? If you're using a phone, it should be right there. Um, no, I'm not using a, I, I'm using my computer. Okay, then if you go down towards the left, is it is it everyone on the left hand side of your computer? Yeah. You should see so where it says available to the tech camera. Yeah, do you see the camera? She probably yeah. doesn't have a camera enabled um, laptop magistrate. Uh, ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, Miss Gladys. What is your relationship to this property? Um, I'm um, the sister of the owner. My name is Gladys Abreu. My brother is the owner. Okay. Where is your brother now? He's, uh, he's in Puerto Rico. He's a doctor, but he's in Puerto Rico. He was waiting over there for maybe four hours because you guys was in the other meeting and he had to left. And um, that's why I take over the conversation to talk to him in, in his behalf. Okay. All right, let me, let's allow the city to, to um, present their case and um, we'll go Madam, from there. Madam Magistrate, I'm not able to swear her in without video. That's, that's okay. And okay, so should I call both of the cases into record? Um, here's the issue that, that um, that's presented. The owner was here and uh, I know that our, um, the last case took a really long time and so, I'm wondering whether or not we should just reset. Um, yeah. I'm, yes. trying, I'm, I'm texting him and texting my sister-in-law also, Anna, and checking one of them that they can get in the computer. But if not, um, I'm here in, in their behalf. Uh, yes, Officer Lewis, St. Louis um, wanted to say afternoon. something. Court Officer St. Louis, um, this case already has two cases that were adjudicated. If I may, if it is going to be an issue, we could also go ahead and table it for November 10th. So that way all cases can be heard at the same time. Good, thank you. All right, let's do that. Thank you. So I'm gonna read the cases where the customers were in Zoom and we postponed them for a month because they were waiting too long. So I'll read them into record. 
Nexum Consulting, LLC, case number CEGMP 2021-00018 at the property of 13700 Northeast 6th Avenue, Unit 111. We postponed that for 30 days. Hey, Laura, one, yes, one second. Who's Kelvin? Yours are Kelvin. He's Panetta. just watching. He's just He just wanted to be watching the meeting Got it. today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chai Property 01 LLC, case number CEODS 2021-00029, property address 1545 Northwest 130th Street, uh, postponed for one month. George Lewis Morales, case number CEFAW 2020-00047, property address 13525 Northwest 5th Avenue, was postponed for one month. Uh, Marie Pierre Lewis, Case number CEBUS 2021-00002, property address 479 Northeast 129th Street was postponed for one month. Case SEMA Corp CERCV 2021-00058, property address 11990 Northwest 11th Avenue was postponed for one month. Evia Lavelle, CEWWC 2021-00015, property address 340 Northwest 139th Street. That customer wasn't signed in, so if you'd like, we can hear this case. Okay. Christopher Colson is the officer on this case. We can't hear you, Chris. My name is Christopher Colson, Code Compliance Officer, City of North Miami. On May 11, 2021, notice was no um, observed the violation of the front door. The kind of violation it is is a weather and water. The front door is unsecure, has, hole, has a hole in it where anybody or anything can get in it. So it was, gave notice to the prop, sent notice to the property certified mail so they could uh, secure it. Never heard anything back from them via email or phone because I think the property owner stays in Jacksonville. Yes, stays in Jacksonville. And also upon final inspection, the violation still remained. You said the violation is the front door. Yes. Hold in it and needs to be secured. Yes. All right. Based on the other um, unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer, I um, find that the violation does exist. Also, find good notice, given proper notice to owners have failed to appear. Hereby, find in favor of the city enter an adjudication. Property owner has until. What's, what's the, um, what is for next month? What is the date, an abatement date for next month? August the 12th, which is two weeks from now, or September 14th? Let's do September 14th. Owners have until September 14th by which to resolve the violation. If the violation is not resolved by the abatement date, that will be a daily final amount of 250. The next case, which is item number seven, I had already called it into record as being tabled. Item number eight, Lindy F. and Lily M. Bell, case number CEDSP 2021-00003, property address is 60 Northwest 120 Terrace. We've postponed that for one month. Item number 10, Morale Simon, CEODS 2020-00049, property address 13730, Northwest 4th Court, Edme St. Louis is the officer. This person was not signed in today, so we can move forward. Good afternoon, Court Officer Edme St. Louis. This violation was originally open on December 14th, 2020. Notice was posted on the property and also mail certified to the property owner. As of notice still appear posted on July 13th. And as of the final reinspection on July 22nd, the violation remains. The outdoor stores are still on the property.
Okay. T sorry, I. Okay, let me see the notice. You said notice by it was by certified mail? Yes. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the code enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find that the violation does exist. Also find good notice, given proper notice, the owners have failed to appear, hereby find in favor of the city enter an adjudication. Owner has until September 14th, by which to resolve the violation. If the violation is not resolved by the abatement date, there will be a daily fine amount of two hundred dollars. The next two cases we already postponed, but I want to read them into record for Robert Abreu, CEEXP 2021-00005 and CEZPU 2021-00010 at property 304 Northeast 128th Street. The following two items, uh, item 13 and 14. Who's Burko LLC, case number CEJNK 2021-00011 for property 12906 Northeast 6th Avenue and CEODS 2021-00035. Both cases are for Officer Ed May St. Louis. This customer never signed in today. Good afternoon. The first case is in regards to junk and debris surra surrounding a tree located on the southwest of the property. Notice was the initial violation was open on May 20th of 2021. Mail certified to both the, prop, the mailing address on property appraisers as well as the registered agent, uh, Vihu Berkovit. Ber um, notice to appear was posted on the property on July 13, 2021. As of the final reinspection for July 22nd, the violation remained. And as for the yeah, outdoor, one. and yeah. as for, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say there are two violations for the same property, right? Yes. <laughs> and as for the um, outdoor storage, notice to it was issued as well on May twentieth, twenty twenty one. Notice to appear was also posted on July thirteenth, twenty twenty one, as of the final reinspection on. July 22nd, 2021, violation remain. Both were mailed to the mailing address of property appraisers as well as the um, registered agent. Uh, of Vihu Berkovic. And both violations came in as a complaint from the neighboring property because one, the junk is, snakes are coming from the tree and there's a whole bunch of junk and debris that seems to be surrounding the, the, the tree. And the outdoor storage was also noticed when access was given to me to the neighboring property. Based on the unrebutted testimony of the court enforcement officer and the evidence presented, I find that the violation still exists. Also find good notice, given proper notice to owners fail to appear. Hereby find in favor of the city enter an adjudication. Owner has until September 14th by which to resolve the violation. If the violation is not resolved, the abatement date, there will be a daily fine amount, um, $250. That's each. Um, okay, and that concludes all items on today's agenda. All right, so we are adjourned.